Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. Don't forget to go and support the original author. He put a lot of effort into writing. Well, let's continue now. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 301. To think they will attack the city during the monster tide. I heard more than 15,000 people died because of the sudden attack. When Evan and others entered the city gate, they heard some hunters talking with each other. Sophie and the others were confused when they heard them. But Evan, who knew about the Dark Guild's plan, was shocked when he heard them. How the hell they killed 15,000 people? Evan thought when he heard them. He already knew there will be some causalities. Even though they were aware about the Dark Guild's plan. After all, other than the fact that the Dark Guild will attack the city they were unaware about other things. Like how many people will attack the city? When will they attack the city? Or the location where they will attack? They had very little information about the attack. But even then Evan never thought that the causalities will be more than 15,000. Did they ignore the warning? And did not prepare anything, even though Valerie's father informed them about the attack? Evan thought because he was really confused about how could so many people die, even though they knew the Dark Guild will attack on the city. What are you guys talking about? Sophie asked one of the male hunters who spoke earlier. You don't know what happened in the city during the monster tide. The hunter asked looking at Sophie and others with a raised eyebrow. We just come back to the city after dealing with the monsters in the B rank zone. So we don't know what happened. David replied when he heard him. Hearing David, an understanding look appeared on the face of the hunter. And he nodded his head. No wonder you don't know anything since you just came back the hunter said. And told them everything that he knew. When Sophie and others heard the Dark Guild attack the city, they were shocked to the core. Even also listened carefully since he wanted to know exactly what happened. So that's how it is when the male hunter finished telling them everything Evan can. T help but sigh. Those bastards attacked the city from all four sides, and acted like suicide bombers to cause large-scale destruction. Evan thought while looking at his right side, according to what the male hunter said earlier, one of the places which were attacked by the Dark Guild was just 10 kilometers away from their current location. Even with an S-rank hunter guarding the city, they were able to cause such a large-scale destruction. Mark muttered with a shocked filled expression on his face. Should we go there? Caleb asked even though he was completely exhausted. Sophie and the others looked at each other before nodding their heads. Are you coming? Mark asked Evan who was still deep in his thoughts. Hearing Mark, Evan also nodded his head. Soon all five of them left from there and proceed to go towards the west side of the city. While moving, Evan and others saw many other hunters who were also going there. Most of them were wearing tattered armor or clothes, clearly indicating they just came from the battlefield. Because of the attack, vehicles were prohibited from going there, so all of them were going there on foot. But since the location was just 10 kilometers away, it didn't take long for Sophie and others to reach there. Many hunters were already present there and were looking at the destroyed area in front of them with complicated expressions. Because of the explosion, an area of around 10 kilometers was completely devastated. In the area affected by the explosion, there was nothing left except the crumbled buildings. Streets were littered with debris, rubble, and fragments of the former structures. Sophie and others were even able to see many places stained with blood. The officials of the Hunter Association were cleaning the place. With the help of the hunters who had earth manipulation skill, it was not hard to clear the place. But currently, there were not many people present who had earth manipulation skill. Most of the hunters were still on the battlefield. Moreover, the hunters who just returned from the battlefield were completely exhausted and were not in the condition to do anything. This is worse than I thought. Evan muttered inwardly after seeing the completely destroyed area. Even though people of the Hunter Association were clearing the area to the best of their abilities, the destroyed area was too big, and it will definitely take some time before they will be able to clear it. Suddenly Evan noticed a hunter found a dead body under the debris while clearing it. When that hunter took out the dead body, Evan was able to see it was the body of a small girl who was just around 5 or 6 years old. When he saw her, Evan don't know why, but he felt a strange feeling rising within his heart. He kept looking at her, and after some time he started to feel a severe headache. Damn, what is happening now? Evan thought when he felt the headache he was feeling started to increase. He looked at Sophie and the others, and saw they were looking at the destroyed area with sad explosions on their face. 
I can't endure it anymore. Evan grabbed his head with one of his hands and felt like he will pass out at any moment. I am not feeling well, so I will be going back first. Evan sent a message to Sophie through his bracelet and left from there. When Sophie received his message she raised an eyebrow. She looked at the place he was standing a moment ago, but saw he already left from there. What happened to him? She felt puzzled when she saw he suddenly left without saying anything. Maybe he is tired because of fighting against the monsters for so long. Sophie said inwardly and stopped thinking about him. Chapter 302. Damn it. Evan cursed as he felt his headache increasing with each passing second. He wanted to return back to the hotel or find a quiet place. But soon he felt his vision started to turn blurry. And he started to lose consciousness. I can't take it anymore Evan thought and looked around him. There were still many people present in his surroundings, and he didn't. T want to pass out here. After confirming no one was looking at him, he used shadow walk skill and became invisible. After using shadow walk, he used shadow wings, and quickly flew towards the roof of one of the building, which was not far away from him. When he used the skills his headache increased once again, and he was very close to passing out. Gritting his teeth, Evan endured the headache and tried his best not to pass out. When he reached at the top of the building, he first confirmed there was no one, before leaning against the roof wall and sitting down. While sitting down he summoned Eclipse and ordered it to protect him while using its stealth skill. He also ordered Asia and Necros to protect him if something unexpected happened. Just as Evan sat down his vision turned black and he lost consciousness immediately. After losing consciousness Evan had a dream. It was a very weird dream, and it was nothing like any dream he saw in the past. In this dream, he saw himself sitting at the edge of a mountain looking at the rising sun. At the bottom of the mountain, there was a small town, and even though the mountain was at least 5,000 meters tall and he was at the top of it, he was still able to see people who were walking in the town without any problem. One more thing that he noticed was that, in his dream, he was around 30 years old, and was looking like a mature version of his current self. He sat at the edge of the mountain without moving. Even when the sun sat down he didn't move, and continued to sit there looking at the starry sky with a lost look. Soon the night passed away and a new day arrived. But like before, he just sat there. Days turned into nights, and nights turned into days. He doesn't know how many days passed by just like this. It might be just 10 days or it might be 10 years. But he didn't move in the slightest from the top of the mountain. Are you alone? One day he suddenly heard a voice. And when he looked in the direction of the voice, he saw a small girl who was around 6 years old standing there. She was barefoot and was wearing white tattered clothes. Her body was looking very fragile. And there was a steam bun in her hands. Just from one look anyone could tell that her condition was not good. But even then her eyes were as bright as the sun. Evan just looked at her for a moment before ignoring her. Suddenly the scenery around him changed. He was still sitting in the same place. But the mountain and the town in front of him were now covered in snow. Don't you feel cold sitting here all day without doing anything? The same small girl appeared beside him wearing a worn out sweater and asked. But Evan ignored her again. And did not say anything to her. The scenery around him changed once again and it was now looking like autumn. I am also alone in this world just like you. Why don't you become my father and start earning some money for me, so that I don't have to worry about my food anymore the girl said to Evan, while patting his shoulders. How many times do I have to tell you to stay away from me, or it won't end well for you, Evan said in a cold tone without looking at her. Now, now, don't be so cold to your daughter. Here, eat this bun and celebrate being a father. The girl said to Evan and ran away from there after placing a steam bun in his hands. Evan glanced at the small girl who was running down from the mountain, before looking at the steam bun in his hand. After looking at the bun for some time he brought it near his mouth. But just as he was about to take a bite his expression changed, and he threw away the steam bun down from the mountain. After throwing away the bun he closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He kept his eyes closed for some time, and when he opened them again his expression returned to normal. He opened his status window and looked at it. 
at sign, pounds, number, percent, and, at sign. After opening the status window he mumbled something that Evan who was seeing the dream did not understand. In the dream, Evan was also not able to read what was showing on his status window. After looking at his status window for some time Evan closed it and looked at the clear sky with a lost look. I should leave from here before something happens. Evan muttered while looking at the sky. After saying that he stood up and started to walk away from the mountain. As he started to walk away, the scenery in front of him changed once again. After the scenery changed, Evan saw himself walking in a place that was littered with corpses. The sky was completely dark. It was raining heavily, and a strong smell of blood assaulted his nostrils. His heart was beating like a war drum as he walked forward. Soon he stopped walking and looked down at the ground. When he looked down, he saw the same girl who he saw in the previous scenes laying on the ground covered in blood. She was missing both of her hands and legs like someone forcefully ripped them off from her body. And there was a horrified expression on blood covered face. Just as he saw her, a dark aura burst forth from his body engulfing everything in the surroundings. And his dream ended. Chapter 303 Evan's eyes snapped open, and he stood up while panting heavily. His body was drenched in cold sweat, and his heart was beating like a war drum. What the hell was that? Evan muttered while trying to calm down. His aura was completely chaotic, and he noticed the shadow energy inside his monarch core was restless. If not for the fact that he doesn't have much shadow energy left after what he did earlier on the front line, he was sure that some of his shadow energy would have leaked out from his core. Currently, he was feeling many emotions at the same time. Happiness, anger, hatred, but the strongest emotion he was feeling was guilt. Just what was that dream? He said trying to understand why he was feeling so many emotions. As far as he remembered, he never felt strong emotions like these. Even in his previous life he never felt emotions like this. But for some reason currently, he was feeling so many emotions at the same time that he wasn't able to understand what was happening. Moreover, unlike his previous dreams where he wasn't able to remember them after waking up, he can remember this dream perfectly even after waking up. That girl, why do I feel like I know her? Evan muttered while rubbing his temples. He doesn't know what was happening, but for some reason, he was feeling he knew that small girl who he saw in the dream. Plus, whenever he recalled the last scene of the dream where he saw her ripped apart body, he felt like someone is squeezing his heart. Why do I always have such weird dreams? Evan said out loud feeling irritated because of his strange situation. He looked around him and saw he was still on the rooftop of the building. The sky was already dark, and Eclipse was standing not far away from him using its stealth skill. He looked at his bracelet to see the time, and saw it was already 10 o'clock. There were also some messages from Edward and Sophie, but he ignored them for now. I slept for more than 8 hours. Evan muttered after seeing the time. After seeing the time he looked at the starry sky recalling how he was doing the same thing in his dream. Just what the f u asterisk k is wrong with me he said because the image of the girl he saw in his dream and the dead body that he saw earlier on the attack site was overlapping again and again. He doesn't know why, but whenever he recalls the dead body of the little girl he saw earlier, he felt his anger rising. Dark guilt. Evan muttered. And for a moment his eyes turned completely cold. He stood up and looked in the direction of the destroyed area of the city. Which was not far away from his current location. I don't know what is happening with me. But I will make sure they will regret what they did today. Evan summoned back Eclipse into his shadow storage. And came down from the building using shadow wings and shadow walk. After waking up his headache decreased a lot. And he wasn't feeling exhausted like before. After coming down he started to walk away from that area going towards one of the hotels. While going back he called Edward, who tried to contact him earlier when he was sleeping. After telling Edward he didn't die in the B rank zone, he asked him when will they leave. There will be a funeral in three days for the hunters and people who died during Monster Tide, and the attack of the Dark Guild. We will leave from here. After that Edward said to him before ending the call, a funeral, huh? Evan muttered and sighed. Other than 15,000 people who died in the attack of the Dark Guild, there were around 3,500 hunters who died in the Monster Tide. The death rate of this Monster Tide is also very high. 
After calling Edward he sent a message to Sophie and others telling them he was fine. They also sent him message earlier asking him if he was fine since he left from there without saying anything. After sending them a message that he was fine he quickly left from there. He took a taxi and asked the driver to bring him to any nearby hotel. But most of the hotels in that area were already full. So it took him three hours before he was able to find a hotel. Wasted so much time in finding a hotel room. Evan muttered when he entered his hotel room. After coming to his room he first took a long shower to clean the blood and dirt on his body. I have three days before we leave from here he said out loud thinking what should he do for the next three days. If it was normal time he might have thought about traveling around the city. Since it is the first time he came to Nafliam city. But after what happened recently. He wasn't in the mood to travel around the city. Let's think about it tomorrow when the time comes he said and came out from the bathroom. After wearing his clothes, he first ordered a normal meal for him. He did not eat anything during the monster tide, so his stomach was protesting. After eating the meal he lay down on his bed and stared at the ceiling of the room with a dazed look. The scenes of what he saw in dreams were coming into his mind again and again. Even after 10 minutes when he wasn't able to stop thinking about the dream he stood up from his bed. I should check out what I got from this monster tide to distract my mind. Evan muttered to himself and looked at his shadow. The next second he used his shadow storage skill and took out the two bracelets from it. Chapter 304 Evan first took out the two bracelets of Necros and Elysia to see how many merit points they collected for him. Eclipse was doing the work of scouting all the time, so it wasn't able to collect any points. When he looked at Necro's bracelet, Evan was stunned. 75,987 points. He muttered feeling a little shocked that Necro's earned almost 76,000 points. He was shocked because he just earned 81,000 points, even though he had the help of Mark and Caleb. Just how did it manage to collect so many points? Evan muttered and transferred all the points from Necro's bracelet to his bracelet. After putting away Necro's bracelet, he looked at Elijah's bracelet. He was thinking that her points might be less than Necro's after all. He sent her to keep an eye on the A rank zone. When he went to the front line, so her hunting time was less than Necro's. But when he saw how many points she collected his jaw almost dropped to the ground. Just what kind of freak is she? Evan muttered feeling disbelief written all over his face. On the screen of her bracelet, it was showing 97,865 points. Her points are even higher than Sophie, even though Sophie was fighting far longer than her Evan said, not knowing what to say. When he came back from the front line, he summoned back Elijah into his shadow storage. But Sophie was fighting against monsters even after he summoned her back. But even after that, her points are higher than Sophie's. She is really a freak. He can't help but say while happily transferring all of her points into his bracelet. After he transferred her points, Evna had a total of 237,445 points. I should be able to buy some good things with these points, right? Evan muttered and lay down on the bed. Since the monster tide is now over, the merit shop feature of this bracelet should be unlocked. Even looked at the functions of his bracelet and saw the option of merit shop which was previously locked was now unlocked. Using the merit shop function, he can see all the things that he can buy using his merit points. This function was disabled before, but now that the monster tide is over, people can use it to buy useful things using their merit points. Let's see if there is something useful for me. Evan muttered and opened the merit shop. When he opened the merit shop, he saw five options there. Potions, materials, cores, artifacts, and skill books. Evan read the five options before him and chose potions to see if there is anything useful there. When he chose potions, a list of tens of different kinds of potions appeared before him. On top of the list, there were normal potions like healing potions, mana potions, stamina recovery potions or agility potions, and so on. But when he scrolled down, he started to see some new potions. Full Mana Recovery Potion. Consuming this potion will recover 100% mana of the user. This potion can only be used once every 5 hours. Price. Ash 10,000 Merit Points. Truth Serum. Consuming this potion compels the person to speak only the truth, making it a useful tool for interrogation or extracting valuable information. Price. Ash 5,000 Merit Points. Energy Vial. 
This potion provides a burst of energy and stamina to the user, temporarily eliminating fatigue and enhancing physical and mental performance. Price. Ash 5000 Merit Points. Psychic Augmentation Serum. Drinking this potion expands the user's psychic abilities, such as telepathy, telekinesis, or precognition, enabling them to tap into their latent mental powers and gain a heightened level of perception and control. Price. Ash 8000 Merit Points. Battle Fury Draft. Upon imbibing this potion, the user taps into their primal instincts, experiencing a surge of uncontrollable rage and adrenaline. Their strength, speed, and combat skills are vastly enhanced for a limited time. The user will fall into a weakened state after the effect of the potion runs out. Price. Ash 15,000 Merit Points. There were many new potions that he never saw before. Evan was interested in some of them, but for now, he just looked at them and moved to the next section of the merit shop. In the materials section, there were different kinds of materials for creating artifacts or potions. Evan was not interested in them, so he just looked at them for a brief moment, and when he didn't find anything useful there, he moved to the next section. When he chose the cause option of the shop, cause ranging from F rank to A rank appeared before him. Even in the merit shop, they were not selling A plus and S rank cause. Moreover, the number of high ranking calls one individual can purchase was limited. One individual can purchase a maximum of three A rank calls, and the price for one A rank call was 35,000 merit points. This was the same for the B and B plus rank calls, one individual can buy a maximum of of 10 cores. The price of one B rank core was 7,000 merits, while the price of a B plus rank core was 15,000 merits. But there was no limit on the cores below B rank. You can buy as many cores as you wanted from the merit shop that were below B rank. The cores are not cheap, huh? Evan muttered after seeing the price of the cores. He scrolled down and saw he can even choose what type of core he wanted to purchase. There were all types of cores from fire cores to water cores and so on. But when he reached at the bottom of the core section, he suddenly saw something that was not core. What is this? Evan said while raising an eyebrow. He clicked on it and the details of the item appeared on his bracelet screen. This. When Evan read the details of the item that was at the bottom of the core section, his eyes opened wide. Chapter 305 dot dot. Core Nourishing Brew Dash. Upon consuming this brew it can help you stabilize your core after your breakthrough. Core Nourishing Brew can also heal the damage of the core to some extent. It can be used only once every 6 months. Evan read the details of the Core Nourishing Brew without blinking his eyes. He didn't care about the fact that it can stabilize the core, since as long as his Monarch Core rank is higher than his Prime Core, it will never be destabilized. Instead, his eyes were fixed on the line that this brew can heal the damage of a core. It has been more than 20 days since his prime core was damaged. At first, he thought that his core will heal in a month of time. But even after 20 days, his core is still filled with many cracks. The healing speed of his core is far slower than he initially thought. At the current rate of its healing, it will take at least one more month before it will be healed. And it is all his speculations, if something goes wrong, it might take even longer. He looked at the price of the brew and furrowed his eyebrows. Price. Ash 35,000 merit points. 35,000. Evan muttered while thinking deeply. If he doesn't buy this brew it might take one month or even longer for his prime core to heal completely. He glanced at his shadow storage which was now filled with cores that he collected and his eyes shine like stars. It might be a little wasteful since it will heal on its own even if I don't do anything. But since I want to increase my strength as soon as possible after the recent events, I should at least buy one of these. Evan muttered and added the core nourishing brew into his purchase list. After remembering what Dark Guild did and he wasn't able to do anything because of not being strong enough, he can't help but feel he needs to increase his strength, which is why he wanted to buy this brew. After adding Core Nourishing Brew to his purchase list, he looked at the Core section for some time. But when he didn't find anything else he moved to the Artifacts section. Honestly, he wasn't interested in the Artifacts much. His gauntlets were already being created by the blacksmith that Valery hired. So he wasn't in need of a weapon. As for armor, a lauger already informed him that Sarah sent an A plus rank weapon and armor to her. And she will send them to him as soon as possible. Instead of weapons and armor, he was more interested in the accessories type artifacts like his earring, 
that saved him during the monster tide. In the artifacts section, there were all types of artifacts ranging from D to A. There were no A plus and S rank artifacts in the list, because they are very rare. At the top of the list, there were mainly weapons and armor, but Evan ignored them and directly went into the accessory section. But while going there suddenly his eyes caught something. Moonlit bow, a rank. A bow carved from ancient moonwood infused with lunar magic. When an arrow is drawn and released from the bow, it glows with soft silvery light, granting it enhanced accuracy and the ability to pierce through magical barriers. In the light of the full moon, the bow's power is further amplified, and its arrows can channel moonlight to heal or weaken its target at the will of its owner. Price dash, 80,000 merit points. A bow, huh? Evan muttered and rubbed his chin. After thinking about it for some time he ignored it for a moment and went further down. Soon he arrived at the accessory section. Whispering earring, B rank dash. These delicate silver earrings possess the ability to amplify the wearer's hearing. When worn, the earrings enhance the user's auditory senses, allowing them to hear even the faintest of sounds. Additionally, it grants its wearer telepathy skill. Price. Ash 30,000 points. The effect of this earring is quite good. Evan muttered after seeing the effect of the whispering earring. Shadow Veil Cloak B plus rank. This flowing cloak is woven from ethereal shadow silk, making the wearer almost invisible in dimly lit or dark environments. When worn, the cloak grants the ability to blend seamlessly with shadows, providing excellent camouflage and the ability to move undetected. Price colon, 50,000 merit points. If I buy this clock, the effect of my shadow walk skill will be further amplified, Evan said, and looked at the other accessories. Stormcaller Pendant, a rank. This pendant is crafted from a rare gemstone infused with the essence of thunderstorms. When worn, it grants the wearer resistance against lighting and wind element. It also grants its wearer the ability to summon a lightning storm once a day. The power of the lightning storm will be equal to the full-fledged attack of an A plus rank hunter. Price dash. 2,00,000 merit points. When Evan read the details of the Stormcaller pendant, he can't help but suck a breath of cold air. With the help of this pendant even an F rank hunter can kill an A rank hunter if caught off guard. Evan muttered while looking at the details of the pendant with glistening eyes. But when he saw its price he shook his head. This pendant is not for me. Even though it was an A rank artifact just like Moonlit Bow, the difference in the price was just too great for him to even consider buying it. He looked at the other artifacts in the section and saw there were many powerful artifacts just like the Stormcaller pendant. But they were also out of his reach since their price was too great for him. After looking at all the artifacts present there, Evan closed the artifacts section and decided to take a look at the skill book section before deciding what to buy. Chapter 306 When Evan saw the first skill in the skill book section, a smile automatically appeared on his face. Fireball colon. Conjure and launch a sphere of intense flames towards a target or area. The fireball is a concentrated mass of magical fire that explodes upon impact, causing damage and potentially igniting objects or individuals in its vicinity. Price dash. 20,000 merit points. No matter what, this skill never gets old. Evan muttered while shaking his head and looked at the other skills. Mana Manipulation Dash. This skill increases your control over mana, thus reducing consumption of mana to some extent when you cast your skills. Price Dash. 5,00,000 Merit Points. When Evan saw the details and the price of the Mana Manipulation Skill book, his eyes almost popped out from their sockets. Isn't this is just a ripped off version of Mana Affinity Fruit? He said while feeling the price of this skill is too high. In his opinion, compared to Mana Affinity Fruit, this skill is nothing but trash. But unknown to him, this skill is very useful for other hunters. Unlike him, other hunters don't have two calls that give them fast recovery and a large pool of Mana. But with the help of Mana Manipulation, they can increase their control of Mana thus reducing the cost of skills. It can save their life during a fight, because with the help of this, they will be able to use their skills more efficiently. Only an idiot will buy this skill for such a high price. Evan muttered and looked at the other skills. Flash Step. The Flash Step skill allows you to move instantaneously from one location to another. It's a swift and almost imperceptible movement that gives the illusion of teleportation. The distance you can travel using the Flash Step depends on your rank. 
Price dash 3,00,000 merit points. Acid spray? You can expel a corrosive spray of acid from your mouth or hands, dissolving objects or causing burning damage to enemies. Price colon 1,00,000 merit points. Sonic Wave. You can emit powerful sound waves that can shatter objects, disorient opponents, or even cause physical harm to your opponent with intense vibrations. Price Dash. 75,000 merit points. Electric Shield. You can generate an electrically charged shield around you or others providing protection against incoming attacks and potentially electrocuting attackers on contact. Price Dash. 1,25,000 merit points. Healing Touch. With the Healing Touch skill you can heal yourself or others. Healing Touch allows you to mend wounds, accelerate the natural healing process, and restore the vitality of yourself or others. Price Dash. 3,50,000 Merit Points. Time Perception. With Time Perception skill you can alter your perception of time. You can slow down or speed up your own perception, giving you heightened reflexes or the ability to anticipate events. Price dash, 4,50,000 merit points. Evan continued to look at skill books, and saw there were many different types of skills. He wanted to buy skills like the flash step or healing touch, but both of them were far too expensive for him. Meanwhile, other skills were too simple and he wasn't interested in them. Another thing that caught his eyes was the skill name. Time perception. This skill was very similar to his temporal velocity skill. After seeing its price, he can't help but praise himself for killing Layla. Because she is the reason he has his temporal velocity skill. Is there any cheap useful skill here? Evan muttered and continued to look at other skills. Oh suddenly a skill caught his eye, and he can't help but take another look at it. Hawk's Eye. Hawk's Eye is a heightened perception skill that grants you exceptional visual acuity and observational abilities. With this skill, your eyesight becomes sharper, allowing you to clearly see everything within 5 kilometers of the area around you. The Hawk's Eye skill also enhances your overall perception, allowing you to pick up on subtle sounds, smells, and changes in your environment. However, extensive use of this skill may put a strain on your mental and visual processing capabilities. Price Dash 50,000 Merit Points A skill that can enhance my visual capacity Evan said, and looked at this skill for quite some time. He always wanted to get a skill that can enhance his eyesight because of his shadow bullet skill. With the help of a skill that can enhance his eyesight, he can use his shadow bullet skill to kill people from a long distance. He was actually thinking about looking for monsters who had skills that can enhance eyesight, so that he could get their skill after absorbing their cause. Evan thought for a long time before he made his decision. I was thinking I have a lot of points before I opened the merit shop. But after seeing the price of the shop, I am feeling very poor for some reason. He muttered before and looked at the other available skill in the merit shop. After looking at the skills for 30 more minutes, Evan finally finished seeing all the available skills. When he finished looking at the skills Evan did not close the merit shop and started to add the items into his purchase list that he wanted to buy. While adding items, he was taking a lot of time because there were many things that he wanted to buy but he did not have enough merit points. It took him more than two hours before he added all the items that he wanted to buy to his purchase list. After taking one last look at the items that he added, Evan placed his order and provided the location of his current hotel, since he will be staying here for the next few days. According to the merit shop, I will receive my items in two days, Evan muttered and looked outside from the window of his room. Let's just hope that all the items that I bought will be useful to me. Chapter 307. After ordering everything that he could buy with his limited merit points, Evan can't help but shake his head. If I'd known things would be so expensive at the merit shop, I wouldn't have shared the merit points that Aqua collected during Monster Tide. The only reason Evan shared Aqua's merit points with Sophie and others was because he felt he collected enough points to buy whatever he wanted from the merit shop. But only now he realized how wrong he was to think that he would be able to buy whatever he wanted. I should have tried even harder to collect more merit points. It was such a good opportunity to get things that you can't buy normally. Evan said because it is almost impossible to buy things like A rank artifacts or skill books normally. To get your hands on these kinds of things. Other than the money you also need connections with the high ranking people of the society. Damn it. 
If not for the fact that I am still too weak, I would definitely have asked for something good after helping them killing the hell ape he said, feeling the need of increasing his core rank once again. After feeling regretful for some time Evan stopped thinking about his zero merit points and looked at his shadow storage once again. There were many things in his shadow storage that he needs to organize especially the cores that he collected during the monster tide. Just like merit points, Evan and his teammates divided cores equally among themselves. But other than the cores that he collected with Sophie and others, he also has cores that Elysia and Necros collected during the Monster Tide. And like he wasn't satisfied with them, he also created Shadow Undeads of the Mantis type monsters, and sent them to rob the cores from the battlefield. He chose those Mantis because of their high speed, and sharp scythe-like arms that can cut the bodies of the monsters easily, allowing them to look for cores faster than normal monsters. There were many storage rings in his Shadow Storage but he first took out Elysia's and Necro's storage rings, because they were the main character for him. When he looked inside Necro's storage ring, his eyes shined like stars because there were many cores inside its storage ring. There are at least 70 BMB plus rank cores Evan said, trying his best not to laugh like a madman. He can't believe Necro's collected around 70 cores in just a few hours. After seeing the calls that Necros collected, Evan looked at Elijah's storage ring feeling even more excited. Without waiting he quickly looked inside it. But when he saw the calls inside Elijah's storage ring, he raised an eyebrow. There are just 60 calls here, Evan said feeling puzzled about the number of calls in Elijah's storage ring. But it didn't take him long before he realized why the number of calls in Elijah's storage ring was less than Necros, even though she killed more monsters than it. It looks like Necros have better luck when it comes to getting calls after killing monsters. Evan muttered while shaking his head. Even though Elysia killed more monsters than Necros, it was obvious that she didn't get any core from most of them. Meanwhile, Necros had better luck, and it got more cores, even though it killed fewer monsters than Elysia. But Evan was not disappointed about the number of cores that he got. With the current number of the cores in his possession, Evan was sure that he will be able to increase his power greatly, once his prime core is recovered. I can't wait to receive that core nourishing brew. After looking at the cores that Elysia collected, he organized other cores that Shadow Mantis robbed during the Monster Tide. The number of cores that Shadow Mantis robbed, were lower than the cores that Elysia and Necros collected. But Evan wasn't surprised by this, because he knew both Necros and Elysia are abnormal and normal monsters can't compete with them. After organizing the cores, he finally looked at the main thing in his shadow storage. In one of the corners of his shadow storage, there were three dead bodies of the monsters. Three thunder wolves Ha Evan said while looking at the bodies of three monsters that he stole from the front line while coming back. Thunder wolves are monsters who are famous for their high agility and terrifying attack power. Among monsters, they can be considered one of the strongest monsters because of their great control over lighting. Other than these three bodies, he also got one A rank core from the front line, when one lighting armadillo sent a lightning spear in his direction by chance, and was killed because his earring reflected back its attack. Among the three thunder wolves that he stole from the front line, two were A rank, while the last one was A plus rank. Once I advance to the next rank, I will be able to turn them into shadow undeads. At that time, Evan muttered, and a wide smile appeared on his face. Even though he knew the chances of his shadow resurrection skill succeeding is not 100%, he still can't help but feel excited thinking about the fact that he might be able to get shadow undeads of 2A rank, and 1A plus rank Thunderwolf. He wanted to look for calls in their bodies, but since he was in the hotel room, he decided to look for it later because he did not want to make a bloody mess here. The success of Shadow Resurrection largely depends on the condition of the corpse, and from what I can see from here, the condition of these three corpses is quite good. Evan muttered thinking about how he will give Dark Guild a surprise with them. Now, I just have to wait for two days. Once I receive my core nourishing brew, and other things that I ordered, I will finally have a chance of increasing my strength once again. Chapter 308 the next day Evan went out for a walk. According to the details on the merit shop, the items he ordered will take one more day, before he will receive them. Since he had nothing else to do for the time being, he decided to look around the city. While walking around the city he saw there were very few people who were walking around. It was 8 in the morning, and usually, the city is full of people at this time, 
But after the recent incidents, most of the people were scared and were staying in their homes. To Evan, the current atmosphere of the city was quite gloomy. It will take some time before everything in the city will return to normal. Evan muttered while entering one of the public parks of the city. There were few people in the park, but Evan noticed most of them were hunters. He walked towards one of the benches of the park and sat there looking at the clear blue sky. When he saw the blue sky he remembered the dream he saw yesterday, and for some reason, the first question that the little girl in his dream asked him came into his mind. Are you alone? Huh? Evan muttered while lost in his thoughts. Now that I think about it, I am really alone. He said like he was talking to himself, and not just in this life, even in my past life. I was a lone attacker who had no friends or family members. I spent most of my time playing games or reading novels, and surprisingly, I never even thought about making friends for some reason. It was like, I just wanted to stay alone and did not want to get closer to anyone. Evan said and continued even after I transmigrated here. I still don't want to make friends or get closer to anyone just like in my previous life. Otherwise, with my current look, I don't think I can't find a rich lady who will spoil me for the rest of my life. When Evan said that suddenly he started to remember some of the dreams that he saw after passing out during his core advancement. Even in those dreams, he saw he was alone and had no friends or family members. When Evan remembered those dreams he felt a mild headache. But it was nothing compared to the headache that he felt last night. So he didn't even bat an eye when he felt it. So I'm a lone dog even in my dreams. Evan said trying to not think about the dreams that he just remembered. Even though he was calling them dreams. He now knew they are definitely more than normal dreams. Even though he knew he is not a genius or the smartest person alive. He is still smart enough to know that there is something wrong with those dreams. He opened his status window and looked at one of the notifications that he received during his core advancement. You have absorbed one of question mark question mark question mark. Your soul is being strengthened because of absorbing question mark question mark question mark. Evan was looking at these two notifications because of the memories that he just received a moment ago. Other than the fact that he was alone in those dreams, he also noticed that at the end of each dream, he was absorbing something from there. In one of the memories that he just received, he saw he was a monk who was meditating all day at the top of the mountain. Read chapter 211. If you forget, one day his monk self suddenly died for no reason while meditating and turned into golden light. After his monk self turned into golden light, he absorbed that golden light and felt a headache. And Evan was very familiar with that kind of headache. During the past months, he felt so many headaches. That now he can call himself an expert in the department of headaches. That headache was very similar to the headache that I felt when I first arrived in this world. And received original Evan's memories he said, while taking a deep breath. Read chapter 2. The more he thought about it the more nervous he become for some reason. If what I just said is true. Then doesn't it mean they were actually memories of people who looked like me. And not just simple dreams. You have absorbed one of question mark question mark question mark. Your soul is being strengthened because of absorbing question mark question mark question mark. He looked at the two notifications once again, and a possibility came into his mind. In the dreams that he saw during his core advancement, all the people who were looking like him suddenly died for no reason and turned into golden lights. Then he absorbed that golden light and felt a headache that was similar to the headache he felt. When he first transmigrated into this world. Could it be, all of those people who looked just like me were real. And after they suddenly died I absorbed their souls. Which is why my soul is many times stronger than before. But this can't be true, right? How can such a thing is possible? He said while shaking his head not wanting to believe on the possibility that just came into his mind. But what if this is true? Suddenly he said while placing his hand on his chest where his heart and monarch core was located. If this is true and all those people were indeed real, then why did they die suddenly and more importantly, how did I absorb their souls to increase my soul power? Did they die because of the power that came into my body from the shadow realm during my core advancement and left after scanning my body? He said feeling he was close to remembering something important. But the more he thinks about it the more chaotic his mind becomes. It was like he is trying to break a seal. But his mind is not strong enough. Ring dash ring dash. Just as he was about to go insane because of his chaotic thoughts. 
His phone rang bringing his mind back to normal from its chaotic state. Chapter 309 Evan came out of his thoughts when he heard his phone ringing. He took a deep breath to calm down his mind, which was clearly shaken because of his own speculations. I shouldn't think too much about it. After all, in the end, it is just my speculation, and there is a very high chance I am wrong. Evan muttered and stopped thinking about the matter of his dreams. He took out his phone from his pocket and was surprised when he saw who was calling him. Did they finally get something? Evan said to himself and quickly picked up the call. Boss, we finally got something. Just as he answered the call he heard a loud voice of a man. Evan's eyes can't help but twitch when he heard the loud voice that almost made him deaf. What did you find? He asked while standing up from the bench and walking out of the park. The man who called him was Terry. The person who was hired by Jack Archer the young master to kidnap him. After he was done with Jack he hired Terry to do something for him. It is been more than 20 days. And he almost forget about them because of all the things that happened recently. We were keeping an eye on him from the day you were asked us. During this time he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. But today something unexpected happened. Terry said to him and continued. Normally that guy would spend most of his time in the academy rarely coming out from there. And even if he comes out, he mostly goes to the brothels or does useless things. But today when he came out from the academy, instead of messing around, he went to one of the gold rank guilds of the Estrate City. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard Terry. So what if he went to a gold rank guild? Most of the hunters want to join a gold rank guild to get better resources. So I don't think it is unnatural for him to go to the gold rank guild. Evan said feeling it is a normal thing. It was obvious the person Terry was talking about was Leon. Even after knowing that Leon is from the duck guild, Evan didn't do anything to him all this time. The reason for this was very simple. From a loser, he knows that the duck guild is very careful regarding the information of its members. Even a loser who is an A-rank hunter doesn't have much information about the Dark Guild even though she was its member. When Evan asked her if she know any other guild who is working for the Dark Guild just like her guild, she shook her head instantly. According to her, the higher-ups of the Dark Guild strictly control this kind of thing and don't allow anyone to share their details with each other. They do this so that even if one of their members is caught by the association, they won't be able to get information about other members from that person. After knowing how Dark Guild works, Evan knew that even if he kills Leon, he won't get anything from him. On the other hand, if he keeps him alive, there is a minor chance that he might be able to get something useful from him. This is why he didn't tell Valerie about Leon, and ask Terry to keep an eye on him and see what he is doing. Boss, I know what you are thinking. But I don't think you will be able to say that once I tell you the name of the guild he visited. Terry said to Evan after hearing him. Evan did not say anything after hearing him. And waited for him to continue. He went to Twilight Moon. Guild Terry said sounding a little smug for some reason. When Evan heard Twilight Moon. He narrowed his eyes because it is Olivia's guild. Even though I don't know much. I still remember that stupid. Jack said that it was the guild master of the Twilight Moon who published those articles about you. So I thought you might be interested in it. Evan stayed silent for some time after hearing Terry. Do you know why he went there? He asked after some time. I followed him inside the guild. But after going in, a staff member of the guild led him to the guild master's office. So I don't know what happened after that Terry said while shaking his head. When Evan heard Terry he can't help but raise an eyebrow. Olivia is an A plus rank hunter and the guild master of the Twilight Moon. Meanwhile, Leon is just a B rank hunter. There is no way she will meet with Leon, who is a B rank hunter without a good reason. Moreover, he also looked into her details after his conflict with her and knew she hate men for some reason. So now that she is meeting with Leon, Evan can't help but get suspicious about her. Even though I am not sure there is definitely something wrong here. Evan thought and pondered for some time. Where are you now? He asked Terry after thinking about all the things. I am outside of a start academy. That guy just came back to the academy after meeting with Olivia and I followed him. How long has he stayed in the Twilight Moon Guild? He stayed there for approximately 20 minutes. Terry replied after hearing him. Just keep an eye on him for a few more days. I will deal with him once I return back to the city. Evan said and ended the call. After ending the call, he sent 3 million credits to Terry. 
since he and his gang is following Leon for more than two months. These guys are better than I initially thought. Evan muttered after sending the money and put away his phone. Chapter 310. After ending the call, Evan started to walk back to the hotel. The atmosphere of the city was quite gloomy, and it was only making his mind more chaotic. It is quite strange they are meeting with each other just after the monster tide of the Naphlium city. Evan thought while walking. When a loser told him about the Dark Guild's plan of attacking the Naphlium city during the monster tide, she also told him that this monster tide is not natural and is somehow related to the Dark Guild. And now, just after the end of the Monster Tide, Leon, who is a member of the Dark Guild, is meeting with Olivia, who hates men for some reason. Could it be that Olivia is also working for the Dark Guild? Just like how Layla was working for them while operating her guild in the Aquaville city. Suddenly Evan thought, and found it is highly possible. Just imagining the fact that one of the most influential guilds of the city is working for the Dark Guild sent a chill running down his spine. There are many high-ranking dungeons that are under their control. If Olivia is really working for the Dark Guild, then she can use Fetid Miasma to cause high-ranking dungeon outbreaks in the city anytime. The Dark Guild is getting more and more active recently. If Olivia is really working for the Dark Guild, then there is a very high chance she met with Leon, because they are thinking about doing something big in the Estrate City as well, just like what Dark Guild did in the Naphlium City. Soon Evan came back to the hotel and went to his room. I will deal with Leon after going back, and we'll see if there is really something going on between him and Olivia. Evan thought as he entered his room and closed the door. For the rest of the day, he sat in his room doing nothing and letting his mind rest. Even though he had many questions after what happened in the park, he decided to not think about it for the time being. Because he was still afraid remembering how he almost lost his mind thinking about those dreams. The day passed just like this and finally, the next day arrived. It should be here soon. Evan muttered in an impatient tone while walking back and forth in his room. Earlier he received a call from the deliveryman who asked him if he is currently available to take the delivery. After he confirmed he is available to take the delivery, the deliveryman told him he will be there in one hour. Just as he was pacing around in the room, his phone suddenly rang. When he looked at it, he saw it was the call from the delivery man. Without picking up the call he used temporal velocity and rushed out from his room. In just a few seconds he arrived outside of the hotel. And after looking around he finally saw the delivery man who was calling him. Still using temporal velocity. He rushed forward and came before the delivery man like a ghost startling him. What the heck? The delivery man cried out in surprise when Evan appears before him and almost dropped his mobile phone. Evan didn't give a sh asterisk t about the surprise face of the deliveryman and extended his hand. Where are my goods he asked in an impatient tone. The deliveryman was speechless and inwardly cursed Evan for scaring the sh asterisk t out of him. Can you show me your hunter card first? Even though he was annoyed, the deliveryman asked in a polite tone. After all, he is a professional, and still wanted to ask Evan to give him 5 star rating for his delivery service. Evan showed him his hunter card, knowing it was important to confirm his id first. After the delivery man confirmed Evan's identity, he handed him a storage ring. Even though the storage rings are quite expensive, their price was nothing when compared to the goods that he ordered, so Evan wasn't surprised when he saw he received a free storage ring. Sir, don't forget to give me a rating for my delivery. Service the deliveryman said to Evan, while handing him the storage ring. But his mouth can't help but twitch when he saw how Evan wasn't even listening to him, and was looking at the storage ring like a hungry wolf. Looks like he is also one of those bastards who only give ratings when he doesn't like the service, and ignores to give ratings when the service is satisfactory. The deliveryman thought and sighed. After taking the storage ring Evan first looked inside it. And after confirming all the items that he ordered were present in the storage ring, he nodded his head. Please sign here the deliveryman said to him after Evan confirmed everything was present in the storage ring. After signing, Evan left from there rushing back towards his hotel room. While going back he took out his phone and opened the delivery confirmation message that he just received. From there he rated the delivery man 5 stars, 
and put away his phone. After coming back to his room he jumped to his bed and sat down there. Without thinking much, he first took out a glass bottle which was filled with golden color liquid from the storage ring that the delivery man just gave him. The bottle was not big, and there was around 100 ml liquid in it. After taking it out Evan looked at its details. Core Nourishing Brew Dash Upon consuming this brew it can help you stabilize your core after your breakthrough. Core Nourishing Brew can also heal the damage of the core to some extent. It can be used only once every 6 months. After confirming the details of the brew were the same as he saw in his bracelet Evan opened the cork of the bottle. When he opened the bottle, a strange smell assaulted his nostrils. But when he inhaled the smell he felt a gentle energy entering his body. After taking a deep breath Evan brought the bottle near his mouth and drank it without stopping. Chapter 311 Just like its smell, the taste of the core nourishing brew was very strange. Evan felt as if he was drinking milk mixed with a lot of tomato ketchup. He tried his best to ignore the taste of the brew and focused on his prime core. As he drank the brew, it turned into energy and that energy went towards his prime core. The energy of the brew was very different from the energy of the cores that he got from the monsters. Instead of being absorbed by his prime core and increasing its rank, the energy of the brew covered his entire prime core. After covering his core, the energy slowly started to seep inside the cracks that were present in his prime core. When Evan finished drinking all the brew and focused on his prime core, he saw it was now covered in a golden energy, and was looking like a golden chicken egg. The golden energy that was covering his prime core was slowly seeping inside the cracks of his core. When he focused on one of the cracks, he noticed that even though it was very slow, the crack on his core was definitely recovering. Seeing the brew was working Evan was ecstatic and waited for his core to completely refine the energy of the brew. Time continued to pass by and Evan sat there patiently without moving focusing on the recovery of his core. After six hours his prime core finally refined all the energy of the core nourishing brew. When Evan looked at his core after it refined the energy of the brew, he can't help but show a delighted expression. Even though his core wasn't fully recovered and there were still some cracks present on it, they were not anything serious. And he was sure that in five or six days, he will be able to absorb the cores once again. It was definitely worth buying this brew. Evan muttered with a smile on his face. Had it not been for this brew, it would have taken at least a month for his prime core to return to normal. Just five or six more days, and then Evan said and closed his eyes for a moment. Other than the fact that he wanted to increase his power, he also wanted to know what will happen once his prime core will reach its C rank. Hunters normally get their class after reaching its C rank. But since he already has a class because of his monarch core, he was wondering if he will get one more class after his prime core will reach its C rank. Unlike novels he read in his past life, there is no concept of subclass in Aurora World. Every hunter possesses only one class, and there is nothing like subclass or anything. Two classes, huh? Evan muttered and looked at the other items in his storage ring. After looking at all the items present in his storage ring, he took out a small purple colored earring. The earring was round in shape and was quite different from his. Shielding amulet earring. Whispering earring B rank dash. These delicate silver earrings possess the ability to amplify the wearer's hearing. When worn, the earrings enhance the user's auditory senses, allowing them to hear even the faintest of sounds. Additionally, it grants its wearer telepathy skill. Evan bought it with 30,000 merit points. The price of this earning was not high, considering it is a B-rank artifact, and even grants telepathy skill to its wearer. Evan knew its price was low because of its effect of being able to hear even the faintest sound. After all, it's not nice to be able to hear everything. After wearing this earring his auditory senses will be enhanced greatly, and since it is an artifact not a skill, he won't be able to control its effect. After looking at the earring for some time Evan wore it on his left ear. Horn dash. Bark exclamation point. Courting death. We should watch a movie instead of this B-U-L-L-S-H asterisk T. Just as he wore the earring, he started to hear useless things one after another. Horns of vehicles, dog barks and many other things that made no sense to him. He wore the earring for some time, but after just one minute he took it off and put it away on his bed, while rubbing his temples. Just as expected, it is not easy to use this earring. Evan muttered after taking off the whispering earring. 
But if I am not wrong, I will be able to put this earring to good use after using that thing. Evan said and put away the earring in his shadow storage for the time being. After putting away the earring, he once again looked in the storage ring and took out another item from it. Moonlit bow, a rank, a bow carved from ancient moonwood infused with lunar magic. When an arrow is drawn and released from the bow, it glows with soft silvery light, granting it enhanced accuracy and the ability to pierce through magical barriers. In the light of the full moon, the bow's power is further amplified, and its arrows can channel moonlight to heal or weaken its target at the will of its owner. The moonlit bow was silver in color, and its frame was filled with different kinds of runes. It was around 170 cm long, just a little shorter than Evan's height. When Evan held the bow in his hand, he felt a warm feeling spreading in his arm from the ancient moon wood. My gauntlets for the close range and this bow for the long range. Evan said and stood up from his bed. After standing up he walked towards the window of his room. His room was on the third floor of the hotel. When he looked out from the window, he saw there were still very few people outside just like yesterday. After seeing no one was paying attention to him, he aimed towards the sky with his bow, and started to pour his mana into the moonlit bow. Chapter 312 As Evan aimed the bow towards the sky and started to pour his mana into it, the frame or the bow which was made from the ancient moon wood started to glow with a faint sliver light, and at the same time, a milky white mana arrow started to form into the bow. Evan looked at the arrow which was forming, and when he felt he poured enough mana, he released the bowstring shooting the milky white arrow into the sky. The arrow turned into a streak of white light and disappeared into the sky, scattering away some of the clouds that came into its path. Seeing the speed of the arrow Evan nodded his head, and was about to put away the moonlit bow, when he thought about something. Just now I used the raw mana to create the arrow, even though it was quite fast there was nothing special about it. But since I can create a raw mana arrow, I should be able to create a wind mana arrow using wind manipulation, right? Evan said while rubbing his chin and aimed his bow toward the sky once again. After aiming the bow he did not immediately pour his mana like last time. Instead, he first activated his wind manipulation skill. After activating the skill, he gathered the surrounding wind around him and poured his mana into the wind that he was controlling with wind manipulation. After pouring his mana into the wind, he controlled it and channeled it into the bow. Just as he channeled the wind-infused mana into the bow, a green arrow started to form into the bow. Seeing it was a green arrow instead of the previous milky white arrow, an excited expression appeared on his face. After the arrow was fully formed, he shoot it towards the sky once again. The arrow turned into a streak of green light and disappeared into the blue sky. Since there was no target in sight, Evan wasn't able to guess the difference in power between the two arrows. But he was sure that the arrows made from elements will have greater power than the non-element arrows. If I can get other skills like fire creation or lighting creation, I will be able to create the arrows of those elements as well Evan said and put away the moonlit bow. Since it was still day there was no moonlight to check the healing or weakening effect of the bow. After putting away the bow, Evan looked in his storage ring, and took out a golden colored skill book. On the front cover of the book, a large eye that looks like the eye of an eagle was engraved. Hawk's Eye Hawk's Eye is a heightened perception skill that grants you exceptional visual acuity and observational abilities. With this skill, your eyesight becomes sharper, allowing you to clearly see everything within 5 kilometers of the area around you. The Hawk's Eye skill also enhances your overall perception, allowing you to pick up on subtle sounds, smells, and changes in your environment. However, extensive use of this skill may put a strain on your mental and visual processing capabilities. Another reason Evan decided to buy Moonlight Bow was because of this skill. With the help of this skill, he will be able to see his enemy from a long distance, and can use the Moonlit Bow to eliminate him. Since I already have night vision, I don't have to worry about not being able to use this skill in the dark. For people who can't see in the dark, it will be quite hard for them to use this skill in the night. But since his Monarch Core grants him night vision, this skill is perfect for him. Just like how he used the skill book last time Evan held it in his hand and started to pour his mana into it. Just as he started to pour mana into the book its golden colored cover lit up. Slowly the books turned into motes of golden light and was absorbed by his body. Just like when he learned time dilation skill, Evan felt a strange energy circulating inside his body. 
after he absorbed the motes of golden light. After a few seconds, the energy circulating inside him started to disappear. You have learned a skill, Hawks Eye. When energy completely disappeared a notification appeared before him. Evan looked at the notification and smiled a little. If I use temporal velocity and Hawks Eye at the same time to snipe someone from a long distance, it will be a godly combination. Evan said feeling he is now stronger than before even though his rank is still the same. After learning the skill, he did not use it immediately, and first took out the Whispering Earring once again. The reason he bought Whispering Earring despite its disadvantages was because of the extra effects of Hawk's Eye. Other than eyesight, this skill also enhances the auditory and smelling senses. Since it is a skill, not an artifact, he will be able to control his auditory senses with its help. He was thinking about controlling his auditory senses with the help of Hawk's Eye skill. After wearing the whispering earring to filter the useless sounds. After taking out the earring he once again put it on. My father is the taxi driver that often appears in this novel. So don't you dare mess with me. So what if your father is the taxi driver? My father is the owner of the cup noodle shop. That the main character often visits. Just like last time. He started to hear useless things after wearing the earring. But Evan ignored all the sounds that he was hearing and activated the hawk's eye while focusing on his auditory senses. You bastard writer, when will you give me a role in the novel? I am going to find where this writer lives and will break his third leg for not giving me any role in the novel. Just as he activated the skill, he started to hear even more useless things because he wasn't able to control the skill properly. Evan furrowed his eyebrow when he heard the strange things all the people were talking about, but he still focused on controlling the skill. Slowly but surely Evan started to get a better understanding of the hawk's eye skill, and after two hours of practicing, he was finally able to filter useless sounds that he was hearing. Chapter 313 Finally no more useless sounds. Evan muttered while rubbing his temples. It took him two hours to control the skill properly and be able to stop the useless voices that he was hearing all this time. Of course, he can stop these useless voices only while using his hawk's eye skill, but he was satisfied with this. After confirming he can now stop the useless voices, Evan took off the whispering earring, and stopped using hawk's eye skill. Damn, I don't know who is this person who offended so many people, but literally every person who I heard just now was cursing him for some reason. Evan said while feeling sorry for the person who was being cursed by these people. Brother, I don't know who you are or what you did, but I will pray for your safety Evan said and sat down on his bed once again. After sitting down he took out four bottles of potion from his storage ring. Among four bottles, two were filled with dark blue liquid. They were the bottles of four mana recovery potion. Full Mana Recovery Potion. Consuming this potion will recover 100% mana of the user. This potion can only be used once every 5 hours. The third bottle was filled with bright green liquid. It was an energy vial. Energy vial. This potion provides a burst of energy and stamina to the user, temporarily eliminating fatigue and enhancing physical and mental performance. The last bottle was filled with dark red liquid, and was looking like it was filled with blood. It was Battle Fury Draft. Battle Fury Draft. Upon imbibing this potion, the user taps into their primal instincts, experiencing a surge of uncontrollable rage and adrenaline. Their strength, speed, and combat skills are vastly enhanced for a limited time. The user will fall into a weakened state after the effect of the potion runs out. After potions, he took out three arrows from his storage ring. One arrow was purple in color, one was orange, and the last one was black in color. They were elemental arrows that he bought for his moonlit bow. Each arrow cost him 800 merit points. With all of these items, he spent a total of 2,42,400 merit points. He had 2,37,445 points. But when he spent more than 2,00,000 points at once, he received a discount of 5,000 points, which is why he was able to buy an energy vial that he was not planning to buy at first. As for the remaining 45 points, he used them to buy 45 F rank cores, which were inside his storage ring. After looking at everything that he bought, Evan can't help but nod his head in satisfaction. He put away his moonlit bow, whispering earring, arrows, and potions into his shadow storage. My prime core will recover in 5 or 6 days. Once I increase the ranks of my cores, 
I will be able to deal with that B.I. asterisk C.H. Olivia, even if she is working for the Dark Guild. Evan muttered and stretched his body. The next day he went to the funeral with Edward and others. When he saw the students and the teachers of the academy, he noticed some of the students were missing. He also noticed that all the teachers including Edward were also injured. When he asked about the students who were missing, Edward told him that six of the students who came with them died during the monster tide. When Evan heard about their death he wasn't surprised. Many people died during the monster tide, and he already expected some of the students who came from a straight academy would also die there. During the funeral, Evan also saw Amanda and Damien. Damien was still missing one of the arms that he lost during the monster tide. Evan was surprised when he saw this, because it is not hard to regrow a lost limb with the help of a high-ranking healer. So he was wondering why Damien was still missing his arm. The atmosphere during the funeral was very gloomy. Evan saw many people who were crying because of losing their loved ones. Dark Guild's attack. When Evan looked at all the people who were crying, he felt very other than the funeral of the hunters who died during the monster tide. It was also the funeral for the people who died because of the Dark Guild's attack. When Evan looked at all the people who were crying he felt very strange. He doesn't like to be around people so he didn't know how to react seeing all the people who were crying there. He was not even able to understand their pain of losing a loved one because he doesn't have any. We will leave tomorrow morning be ready. At the end of the funeral Edward told Evan and the other students before leaving with the other teachers. Evan also left from there and decided to head back to the hotel. While going back he met Sophie and some other students of the Clear Sky Academy by chance. When Evan saw other students of the Clear Sky Academy he noticed most of them were either C rank or C plus rank, just like the students of a straight academy. There were no other students who were abnormal like Sophie and others who were B or B plus rank. When Evan saw this he confirmed his guess that Sophie, Caleb, David and Mark must have found something good in the past that allowed them to increase their rank. Looks like the students who will represent Clear Sky Academy during the All Academy Tournament are already decided. Evan thought after he said goodbye to Sophie and others. After saying goodbye to them he returned to the hotel. I will have to deal with Leon after I return to the Estrate City, Evan said as he lay down on the bed and stayed in his room for the rest of the day. The next day he left the hotel early morning and went to the airport. When he reached there he saw Edward and other teachers were already present there. After all the students arrived at the airport, they boarded the plane from which they came to the Nafflium City. After they all sat down the plane took off and flew towards the start city. Chapter 314 Around 36 hours later, the plane landed at the Astart City Airport. It was night time when Evan and others reached at Astart City and left the airport. While leaving the airport Evan noticed Edward and the other teachers were still slightly injured because of fighting against the high-ranking monsters during the monster tide. Meanwhile, some students were still gloomy because of the death of the six students. When they came out, a bus from the academy was already waiting for them outside of the airport. Professor. I have something else to do. I will return to the academy on my own. Evan said to Edward when most of the people boarded the bus. Edward just nodded his head after hearing him and left from there with other students and teachers without asking anything. They were already in the Estrate City, so he couldn't care less about what is Evan going to do now. When Evan saw Edward and the others leave, he took out his phone and called Terry. Where is he now? He asked Terry after he picked up the call. He is messing around in one of the brothels. I will send you his location. Terry said and ended the call. Soon Evan's phone rang and he saw Terry sent him a location. After taking a look at the location he grabbed one of the taxis and asked the driver to bring him to the location that Terry just sent him. When the taxi driver saw the location where Evan wanted to go, he showed him a knowing smile. Evan knew why the taxi driver was smiling like that, but he didn't bother to correct him. Around 50 minutes later, he reached at his destination and left the taxi after paying the bill. After leaving the taxi when he looked around him, Evan saw the street in front of him was decorated with high lighting, and was filled with shops related to bars, clubs and other similar kinds of stuff. After reaching there he once again called Terry and told him he arrived at the location. Three minutes later he saw Terry coming towards him from deep within the street. Boss, you are here Terry said after coming before Evan. Evan nodded his head and asked him to lead the way. He came here because he wanted to deal with Liam. When the plane was about to land at the Astart City Airport, 
he sent a message to Terry asking about Leon's location. When Terry confirmed Leon is not in the academy, Evan didn't delay it and decided to take care of him. He also wanted to know why he met with Olivia, and if she is related to the Dark Guild, and were trying to attract the people who were walking around. Evan ignored them and looked at the name of the building, because soon Terry brought him in front of a Lagic Sowery's looking building. There were many girls in revealing clothes outside of the building, and were trying to attract the people who were walking around. Evan ignored them and looked at the name of the building, because it was just too strange. Let's go to the heaven together. Is this a brothel? Evan asked Terry after seeing its name. Yes, Terry said when he heard Evan and wondered why he asked such an obvious question. Evan wanted to comment on the naming sense of the person who named this place. But for some reason, he felt like if he comment on the naming sense of this person, it will not end well for him. So he decided to ignore the name for the time being. Just lead me to where that guy is Evan said, and suddenly disappeared from the place he was standing. Boss Terry was startled when Evan suddenly disappeared and started to look around him. Just lead the way, I will follow you. Suddenly Terry heard Evan's voice, but he still wasn't able to see him. Just what kind of D-plus rank hunter is this guy? Terry can't help but think when he heard Evan voice and finally understood he was using a skill that can make him invisible. He still remembered how Evan summoned Necros who was a B plus rank monster, just thinking about the fact that a D plus rank hunter have such abnormal skill, made his mind dizzy for a second. Why are you not moving? Terry came out of his thoughts when he heard Evan's voice once again and started to walk towards the brothel. When Terry reached at the entrance of the brothel, the girls who were standing there greeted him with charming smiles on their faces. Terry also smiled at them and entered inside. Evan also followed him while using the invisibility effect of his shadow walk skill. The atmosphere inside the brothel was exactly what you would expect from a brothel. Terry glanced around for a bit before he started to walk towards the stairs which were leading upstairs. Using the stairs he came to the third floor of the brothel and proceed towards the stairs which were leading to the fourth floor of the brothel. But unlike other floors, the stairs of the fourth floor were being guarded by two C-rank hunters. Evan, who was walking behind Terry, also saw a board with VIP only written there. After coming before the guards, Terry showed them a card. After seeing the card, both of the guards stepped aside and allowed Terry to go to the fourth floor. Evan followed after him and both of the guards were not able to detect him. When he reached at the fourth floor, he saw there were many rooms, and most of them were closed. Terry walked towards one of the rooms and stopped after coming in front of it. Um, bosses. After stopping he spoke while looking around since Evan was using shadow walk skill, he was not able to sense him. Is he inside? Terry heard Evan's voice and nodded his head. You can go back for now Evan said to Terry after he confirmed Leon's room. Hearing Evan, Terry immediately left from there without asking anything. Now how should I deal with this guy? Evan muttered while looking at the closed door after Terry left. Chapter 315 Just as Evan was thinking about forcefully opening the door, he heard the sound of footsteps coming from inside. Clank dash. Suddenly the door of the room opened, and a girl with a rosy face who was just wearing her undergarments came out of the room. The girl was not able to sense his presence and walked away from there after coming out of the room. Evan ignored the girl who came out and looked at the now open door with a smirk on his face. Without caring about the privacy of Leon he stepped inside the room and closed the door behind him. When he came in, he saw Leon was putting on his clothes. Since Leon was just a B-rank hunter, he also wasn't able to sense his presence. Evan walked towards him using the invisible effect of Shadow Walk and delivered a karate chop right at his nape to knock him unconscious, just like how he saw in the movies. But after receiving the karate chop instead of fainting, Leon dropped to the ground because of the impact and started to look around with a vigilant look. Evan was stunned when he saw Leon was still conscious even after receiving his karate chop. He looked around the room and picked up a small iron statue. After grabbing the statue he came before Leon who was trying to stand up. But his legs were shaking because of the exercise he just did. This should be enough, right? Evan thought and without any sympathy smashed Leon's head with the iron statue. F U asterisk K. But once again Leon didn't act according to the script and cursed out loud instead of fainting. His head started to bleed and soon his face was covered in blood. Damn. I am never going to try the tricks of movies in real life again. 
Evan thought and shook his head when Leon did not faint even after he smashed his head. Suddenly Evan felt minor fluctuations coming from Leon's body. He quickly moved forward and before Leon could use any skill, he landed a kick directly on the limb that Leon just used for exercise. Ugh. A heart-wrenching cry came out from Leon's mouth, but no one was able to hear him because the room was soundproof for obvious reasons. At the same time, the mana fluctuations coming out from Leon's body completely stopped because of the shock that he just received. I was thinking about bringing him somewhere else to interrogate him, but now that I think about it, this place is also not bad. Evan thought and stopped using his shadow walk skill. But even when he stopped using shadow walk, Leon still didn't pay attention to him, because he was too busy rolling on the ground in pain. Evan didn't say anything to him and sat down on one of the chairs present in the room. After around three minutes Leon finally lifted his tear, snot and blood-stained face, and looked in Evan's direction. Yo! When Evan saw Leon finally look at him, he greeted him with a friendly smile on his face. You! Leon was stunned when he saw Evan and looked at him with disbelief written all over his face. He can't believe it was Evan who was beating him during all this time. In his eyes, Evan was just a D-plus rank hunter who he could kill whenever he wanted. So after seeing how he played with him, anger started to well up in his heart. Bastard I am going T. Before Leon could finish what he wanted to say, a black bullet stopped just a few inches away from his left eye. I don't care about your empty threats because I can kill you without even lifting my finger. So if you don't want to suffer anymore just answer some of my questions. Evan said while tapping his finger on the armrest of the chair. Leon swallowed his saliva when he saw how close the bullet is to his eye and nodded his head meekly. Even though he was angry, he knew that if he tried to do anything funny, he might lose one of his eyes before he could do anything. Good. Evan smiled when he saw Leon nodding his head. So Mr. Leon, tell me why did you meet Olivia three days ago? Without beating around the bush, Evan asked the main thing that he wanted to know. Hearing Evan, Leon's face stiffened for a moment. But it immediately returned to normal as if nothing happened. But Evan didn't miss that change, since he was paying full attention to his face while asking the question. What are yo? And by the way, I already know you are working for the Dark Guild, so there is no point putting on an act in front of me. Before Leon could speak Evan said once again, this time Leon was not able to control his expression and looked at Evan with a shocked filled face. How did you find out? He asked in a shaky voice because he knew if Evan told the association he is working for the Dark Guild, there is no way he will be able to escape from them. Hearing him Evan just smiled and did not say anything. Suddenly a fireball started to form in front of Leon. But before he could use it on Evan a powerful pressure descend on his mind making him cry out in pain. Crack dash. Ugh. After stopping Leon using his mind suppression skill Evan crushed one of his legs. If you are thinking you can escape from here then you are just dreaming Evan said and sat down on the chair once again. This is your last chance. If you try to do anything funny once again, then you are in for a long session of torture. Leon held his broken leg and looked at Evan with hate and despair filled look. He wanted to try to attack him once again, but gave up after seeing the bullet which was nearly touching his left eye and decided to tell him what he wanted to know. I went to meet Olivia because, Leon said and was about to tell him why he went to meet Olivia. But just as he started to speak some purple lines started to appear on Leon's face. Evan stood up when he saw this, and noticed Leon's eyes also turned blood red. His mouth was slightly open like he wanted to say something, but no sound came out of his mouth. What the hell is going on? Evan thought with a serious look on his face. He walked toward Leon wanting to see if he could stop whatever is happening to him. But just as he reached in front of him, Leon's life aura completely disappear. Chapter 316 Evan frowned and closely looked at Leon's cold body. What happened to him? Evan muttered feeling confused about Leon's sudden death. The purple lines were still present on his face, and were getting darker as time passes by. Soon Evan noticed blood start to come out from Leon's mouth, eyes, nose and ear. Was he poisoned? Evan thought and summoned Elijah. Elijah, use your healing spell on him, and see if you can remove this poison. Even though Leon was already dead, Evan wanted to see if he had died of poison or some other reason. 
But when Elijah saw Leon's body she didn't immediately use her healing spell, instead said something unexpected to Evan. Master, this is not a poison but a curse. Evan who was focused on purple lines was stunned when he heard Elijah. He knew there are many people who have skills related to the curse, but this was the first time he was seeing this. Do you know what kind of curse is this? I think it was a restriction type curse that would activate when someone tried to do something that was prohibited by the person who placed the curse on him, Elijah said after hearing him. When Evan heard her a light of understanding appeared in his eyes. He died just as he was about to tell me why he met Olivia that day. Does it mean she was the one who placed the curse on him? Evan pondered while looking at the purple lines that were now covering Leon's entire face. If before I was just suspicious then now I am sure there is definitely something wrong with that bit asterisk h. Evan thought and smirked. She might be thinking no one will be able to know anything from Leon since she placed this deadly curse on him. Evan said and shadow energy inside his monarch core churned. But too bad for her. Some of his shadow energy seeped inside Leon's body and it started to shake. Dead people can give me information more easily than the alive people. Evan watched as a shadow undead who was very similar looking to Leon rose in front of him. Seeing his shadow resurrection skill was successful a smile appeared on Evan's face. Oh, right suddenly Evan thought about something and looked at Elijah. How did you know it was a curse not a poison? Hearing Evan, Elijah tilted her head in a confused manner. Seeing her confused look Evan just shook his head and didn't ask anything else. After becoming shadow undead Elijah's memories were foggy and she didn't remember everything about her. Since she doesn't know why she has knowledge about curses, Evan guessed it might be because of her lost memories. Evan summoned back Elijah into his shadow storage, and looked at Leon's shadow undead. Do you remember everything that happened before you died? Evan asked Leon's shadow undead, because it was the first time he was going to ask questions to a shadow undead, who is not his saved shadow. Yes, Master Leon's shadow undead said while bowing his head. Seeing he can get information from a shadow undead who is not his saved shadow, a smile appeared on Evan's face. Tell me, why did you meet Olivia? Without wasting his time Evan directly asked the main question. It was the order from the higher ups of the Dark Guild shadow Leon said when he heard Evan's question. They sent me a strange box and asked me to deliver it to Olivia. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard Leon and asked him what was inside the box. That box was sealed and they told me not to open it. So I don't know what was inside. Shadow Leon said while shaking his head. Evan fell into deep thought after hearing Leon. Even though he did not get any significant information from him, Evan was now sure that Olivia is somehow related to the Dark Guild. They asked you to deliver the box to Olivia. Were they also the ones who arranged your meeting with Olivia? Because as far as I know that bit asterisk h hates men for some reason, and I don't think you have the ability to convince her to meet with you. Evan asked after thinking about all the things for some time. Hearing Evan, Shadow Leon nodded his head, confirming that it was indeed the higher ups of the Dark Guild who arranged the meeting. Maybe they are trying to convince Olivia to join the Dark Guild. And inside that box, there was something that the Dark Guild sent her to show their sincerity. Evan thought while rubbing his chin. Do you know what is the relationship between the Dark Guild and Olivia? Evan asked Shadow Leon. No master. This guy is completely useless as Evan can. T help but think when he heard Leon. Do you know anyone else who is related to the Dark Guild? No master. How did you join the Dark Guild? One day I met a man during a dungeon raid. He was the one who helped me join it. Leon said. Who was that man? Evan asked when he heard Leon. I don't know. I met him only one time, and I never saw him again, after he helped me join the Dark Guild. Evan was speechless when he heard Leon. This guy was definitely a cannon fodder, since he doesn't have any information about the Dark Guild. Evan thought and sighed inwardly. He asked a few more questions to Shadow Leon, and just like before, he didn't get anything significant information from him. You are completely useless you know. Evan said and cancelled Shadow Resurrection skill. The Shadow Leon in front of him disappeared when he cancelled Shadow Resurrection skill. After cancelling the skill he stood up, and after giving one last glance to the cold body of Leon, he started to walk away from there, without bothering about cleaning the mess that he created just now. Chapter 317 Evan used the invisibility effect of the Shadow Walk, 
and left Leon's room. When he came out of the room he saw there was no one even though Leon was screaming like a pig a moment ago. While going down from the brothel he was thinking about the box that Leon mentioned earlier. Just what was inside that box that Olivia even placed a curse on Leon so that he won't be able to talk about it to anyone. Even though it was just his guess, Evan was 90% sure that it was Olivia who placed the curse on Leon, because during all this time, Terry was keeping an eye on Leon. And according to him other than Olivia, Leon did not meet with any other person during all this time. Evan soon reached the entrance of the fourth floor, where the two C-rank hunters were standing guards. And just like before they were not able to detect him. Evan also didn't do anything and left from there. Soon he came out of the brothel and didn't see Terry anywhere. Did he leave from here? Evan wondered since he did not tell Terry to wait for him. After looking around when he did not see him, Evan decided to go back to the academy first. And inform him about Leon's death later. He wanted to tell Terry about Leon's death. So that he would know that he no longer needed to watch over him. After coming out of the brothel, Evan stopped using his shadow walk skill and started to walk away from there. But while leaving, Evan suddenly heard a commotion and saw a small crowd gathered not far away from the brothel. Seeing the commotion, Evan walked there and saw two men in the black suit were beating a man. The man being beaten up was a B-ranker and his face looked strangely familiar to Evan. Yes, break the bones of this bastard. If he didn't bring that A asterisk shoal there, I wouldn't have lost all my things. Evan heard an angry shout of a young man, and when he looked in the direction from where he heard the shout, he saw a young man in stylish clothes standing there with an arrogant look. The man was shouting from time to time, and was standing like he had the biggest DI asterisk K in the world. Surprisingly Evan felt the face of this man was oddly familiar as well. Evan carefully looked at the person who was being beaten by the two men in black, and finally recognized him as Terry. He wasn't able to recognize him immediately, because currently Terry's face was covered in blood, and he was missing some teeth as well. After recognizing Terry it didn't take him long, and he recognized the arrogant man as well. He was Jack Arca the young master whom he robbed after coming back from Aquaville City. The reason he didn't recognize Jack immediately was that he didn't pay much attention to him the last time they met. So he forget his face completely. You were the one who asked me to kidnap him. If that guy screwed you after that it wasn't my fault. Terry said while trying to protect his face from the kicks of the two men in black. Just shut up Jack shouted when he heard Terry. And what the hell you two are doing? I asked you to break his bones, not to give him a massage. After listening to Jack, the two men began to beat Terry even more brutally. Evan wasn't interested in this pointless farce, but remembering how Terry had done a great job keeping an eye on Leon, he decided to help him out this time. Yes, break his hands as W. Hey, why don't you tell them to stop now? Jack, who was enjoying the show, suddenly heard a voice from behind and felt a chill running down his spine. He quickly turned around, and when he saw Evan's smiling face, his heart almost leapt out from his chest. You, what are you doing here? Jack asked, trying to calm down his fast-beating heart. The two men who were beating Terry also stopped when they saw someone standing just before Jack. It doesn't matter what I am doing here, but that guy is currently working for me, so I advise you to stop what you are doing. Evan said while pointing at Terry. The two men in black already stopped beating Terry and stood beside Jack so that Evan won't be able to do anything to him. Jack hesitated for a moment after hearing Evan, but when he saw two men in black standing beside him, his confidence increased once again, and one of the traits of a young master pushes his luck until he dies. Activated. I don't care if he is working for you or not. Besides, dot dot if you don't want to end up in the same state as him. You better return all the things that you took from me that day otherwise. Jack said while making a threatening gesture with his hand. In Jack's eyes, even though Evan was strong and can summon a B-plus rank monster, he won't be able to take care of three of them at the same time. Evan chuckled when he heard Jack. Knowing Jack's personality is similar to that of a young master, he already knew that he will say something like this. Evan closed his eyes for a moment and looked at the condition of his prime core. Unlike before, now there were very few cracks left on his prime core. Just three or four more days, and I should be able to increase the rank of my prime core, Evan thought and opened his eyes. At that time, even if his father who is an A-rank hunter came after me, 
I will be able to handle him. Evan smiled a little thinking about he will be able to increase his rank soon enough. Looks like I don't need to hold back this time. Chapter 318. Looks like I don't need to hold back this time. Seeing Evan was smiling after hearing him, Jack felt insulted and another trait of the young master. Egotistical. Activated. How dare he smile in front of me. Jack thought and his eyes turned cold. If you are thinking that monster of yours will be able to protect you, then you are gravely mistaken this time Jack said, thinking Evan was so confident because of the monster he summoned last time. Don't worry, I don't need it to deal with a trash like you. Evan said while shrugging his shoulders. Seeing how Evan was not taking him seriously Jack's face turned red from anger. Catch him he said to two men in black who were standing beside him. Hearing Jack's order both of them moved towards Evan without any hesitation. After all, in their eyes Evan was just a weak D plus rank hunter. But just as both of the men in black took a step towards Evan, all the hairs on their bodies stand up to no end, and they felt a lethal threat like never before. Both of them stopped approaching Evan and quickly jumped sideways. Just as they jumped sideways, two black bullets shot out from the ground, barely missing them. Seeing both of them were able to dodge the dimensional shadow bullet, Evan showed a surprised expression. Because it is not easy for people to dodge his dimensional shadow bullet. But soon Evan smirked and controlled the bullets that just missed their targets. Both of the men didn't even get a chance to understand from where those earlier bullets came from. Before they saw the bullets that missed them earlier change direction in mid-air and came towards them once again. Seeing bullets coming towards them they were about to use their skills as well. But suddenly they once again felt the same feeling of danger just like last time. They quickly wanted to jump away once again. But before they could jump away two ice chains came out from the ground and wrapped around their ankles stopping them. Whoosh exclamation point. Just as the ice chain stopped them from moving, four more bullets just like before shot out from the ground and pierced the heels of their feet. Ugh. Both of the men cried out in pain, and even before they could do anything, the two bullets that changed direction a moment ago reached at them and pierced their shoulders. Red blood spurted out as both of them fall to the ground, withering in pain. Even though it looks like many things happened, all this happened in less than 5 seconds since the moment Jack asked both of the men in black to catch Evan. Because shadow bullets pierced the heels of both of their feet, they were unable to stand up anymore, and Evan even injured their shoulders as well. Jack was stunned seeing his two bodyguards were not even able to touch Evan before he rendered them useless. Terry was also looking at everything with his toothless mouth wide open. Till now, he also thought that Evan was strong because of the B-plus rank monster that he can summon. But after seeing how even without summoning his monster, he took care of both of the B-plus rank hunters, he doesn't know how to react. After seeing both men in black were out of the show for the time being, Evan turned around and looked at Jack with a smile on his face. When Jack saw that smile, he felt a chill running down his spine, and another trait of the young master. Bullies the weak, fears the strong. Activated. He took a step back wanting to run away from there. Even though he was be a rank hunter, he didn't even think about fighting against Evan, after seeing what happened with his two bodyguards. But Evan was not in the mood to let him go. He pressed his feet on the ground and used temporal velocity. Boom dash. A loud booming sound rang out as the ground beneath his feet cracked open and he instantly appeared before Leon, who was standing 30 meters away. Because of using temporal velocity, Evan saw in slow motion how Jack's expression slowly changed when he appeared in front of him in an instant. Jack wanted to defend himself, but before he could use any of his skills, Evan used mind suppression on him. Jack, who was about to use his skill, felt a heavy pressure boring down on his mind, and lost focus for a moment. Just as he lost focus, Evan landed a powerful punch straight into his solar perplex, sending him flying backwards like a broken kite. Jack crashed 30 meters away and started to cough out blood, his face went pale, and his entire body started to shake. Evan didn't give him time to recover, using his high agility he once again appeared before Jack, and sent him flying, by kicking him right in his face. Catch a dash! The sound of teeth breaking rang out as Jack crashed 10 meters away with a broken nose. For the next 3 minutes, Evan continued to beat down Jack in different ways. Why are you not acting cocky anymore, huh? 
Terry looked at everything with his eyes wide open. Even though it was Jack who was getting the beating of his life, he can't help but shuddered just looking at how Evan was using Jack like a football, sending him flying everywhere with a kick. Go on dash. Jack crashed on the ground after receiving another kick from Evan. When Evan walked towards him he saw Jack passed out because of the intense beating that he just gave him. He lasted longer than I initially thought. Evan muttered inwardly after seeing Jack who was covered in blood and had most of his bones broken. He looked at the finger of Jack, and after seeing the storage ring a wicked smile appeared on his face. Mine now. Without any hesitation he took away his storage ring just like last time, and started to walk away from there. Chapter 319 When Terry saw Jack's condition, he can't help but think about how he behaved in front of Evan, when he went to kidnap him. I was lucky that he let me off at that time. Terry thought while swallowing his saliva. Why are you still sitting there? Terry came out of his thoughts when he saw Evan standing in front of him. Ah, uh, thinking about staying here all night. Um, my legs, Terry said while looking at his legs. When Evan focused on Terry's legs, he saw both of them were broken, and even though he already drank a healing potion, it will still take quite some time before they will return to normal. Seeing his broken legs Evan didn't say anything. A green light flashed in his eyes as he activated his wind manipulation skill. Suddenly Terry's body started to levitate in the air. What th? Terry was startled when he suddenly started to levitate and tried to back away from there. Don't resist. Terry heard Evan's voice and saw him walking away from there. Hearing Evan, Terry stopped resisting. And just as he stopped resisting his body started to move on its own following after Evan. After 5 minutes of walking when Evan saw there was no one around them, he stopped using wind manipulation skill. Ugh. When Evan stopped using wind manipulation, Terry who was floating behind him dropped to the ground and cried out in pain. Because he was still seriously injured. Evan didn't care about his scream and summoned a leisure. Heal him. Suddenly Terry saw a black colored humanoid monster whose eye sockets were burning with purple flames appeared before him. What the he? Terry was scared sh asterisk less, and tried to back away from there thinking Elijah was a monster. But before he could back away Elijah's hand glowed with white light, and Terry felt a warm feeling spreading all over his body. Because of her strong healing skill, Terry's body returned to normal in less than 5 minutes. Come back. When Evan saw Terry was fine, he summoned back Elijah into his shadow storage. Terry was still stunned because of the things that just happened and didn't stand up even after he was completely healed. You don't have to keep an eye on Leon anymore. He is already dead. Evan didn't bother him, and after summoning back Elijah started to walk away from there. Terry's mind was still processing all the things that just happened. So when he heard Evan saying Leon is dead, he didn't even flinch and treated it like this is the most natural thing in the world. After leaving from there Evan grabbed a taxi and asked the driver to bring him back to the academy. A car stopped in front of a luxurious mansion. Just as the car stopped, the giant black door of the mansion opened automatically. The car entered the mansion through the gate, slowly moving toward the mansion building. Through the window of the car, Olivia looked at the wide garden of the mansion, which was filled with variety of flowers and trees. While looking at the garden suddenly Olivia's expressions changed. She stopped looking at the garden and closed her eyes for a moment. After a minute when she opened her eyes once again a cold light passed through them. Since he is dead does it mean he was trying to tell someone why he met me? Olivia muttered with a frown on her face. She can't understand why Leon will tell anyone about his meeting with her. Did someone force him to tell about a meeting or did he try to tell on his own? Olivia thought and took out her phone. She sent Leon's photo to someone and asked him to check everything Leon had done in the past few days. After sending the message she put away her phone and walked out of the car. If anyone forced him to tell him about a meeting, I would have to find him as it is possible that he knew about my relationship with the Duck Guild. Olivia thought as she disappeared inside the mansion building. A man who looks to be in his mid-thirties. Had brown hair and black eyes were sorting out some documents when his phone rang. While still looking at the documents, the man picked up the call even without checking who was calling him. The name of the man was Adam, and he was the current guildmaster of the Arkan scribe, as well as the father of Jack. Hello Adam said in an indifferent voice after picking up the call. But in just 10 seconds after picking up the call, 
His expression took a complete U-turn, and he dashed out of his office room in a hurry. After coming out of his house, Adam used his flying ability and flew away from there. In just 10 minutes he landed before the guild building of the arcane scribe guild and went inside. After going in he moved towards the nursing ward of the guild, where injured hunters usually get treated. Soon he reached at the VIP room of the nursing ward and saw Jack who was laying inside, his body still covered in blood. Seeing the broken condition of his son Adam lost control over his emotion for a moment, and the aura of a rank hunter covered the entire building. But he soon calmed down and looked at the two men in black who were Jack's bodyguards. Just from a single glance, Adam confirmed that they were also injured even though their injuries were nothing when compared to Jack's injuries. Where is the healer? Before asking what happened to Adam asked because he was worried about Jack's condition. Both of the bodyguards were still scared because of feeling the powerful aura of Adam just now. But they tried to surpass their fear and informed him that they already called the healer. And he will be here in a few minutes. After hearing the healer will be here in a few minutes, Adam sighed in relief and looked at Jack with a worry-filled gaze. He took a deep breath and once again focused on the two bodyguards who shivered when they saw Adam looking at them. Tell me what happened, and don't you dare hide anything from me. Chapter 320 Evan stood blindfolded in the middle of the academy's training center. His body was covered in sweat, and he was moving his head from time to time, like trying to sense something. Suddenly Elijah appeared behind him and threw a punch at him. Just as Elijah appeared behind him Evan's ear perked up, he quickly turned around and threw a punch as well. Evan's fist met with Elijah's small fist and... Boom dash. A booming sound echoed out as the ground of the training center shook. Because of the high impact of their clash, all the runes in the training center lit up to dismiss the force. Due to the high strength of Elijah, Evan slid backwards upon the impact. But since she wasn't using her full power he was not injured. After clashing with Evan, Elijah didn't stop and once again charged at him. Even though he was blindfolded, Evan still reacted and perfectly dodged her attacks. From time to time he was getting hit by Elijah's attack, but he still remained blindfolded and continued to fight against her just like this. After 5 minutes of fighting, Evan wasn't able to dodge one of Elijah's punches, and was sent flying away. F U asterisk K. Evan can't help but curse when he crashed on the ground and felt his body hurting all over. Damn, it is not easy to fight only by using my auditory senses Evan thought and did. T try to stand up anymore. Suddenly he felt a warm feeling spreading all over his body, and the pain he was feeling started to disappear. Evan lifted his hand and removed his blindfold. Thanks, Elijah. When he removed his blindfold he saw Elijah using her healing skill on him. Elijah smiled after hearing him and continued to use her healing skill on him. After a minute Elijah stopped using her skill and Evan sat up. He removed the whispering earring and stopped using the hawk's eye to control his auditory senses. It has been two days since he returned from Nathlium City. After coming back to the academy Evan did nothing but train all day in the training center. Other than trying to better control Whispering Earring, he also practiced using mana reinforcement and skills at the same time. In most two days his core will be healed completely, and he wanted to perfect most of his current skills before that. In these two days, the news of Leon's death also spread throughout the academy, and it created a lot of uproar. The death of a student is not a new thing in the academy, as many students often go into the dungeon or wilderness to hunt monsters and die there. But Leon's death created an uproar because of the way he died. After seeing he died because of a restriction type curse, both the Hunter Association and Academy are trying to find who placed the curse on him. Of course, Evan knew that it was probably Olivia who placed the curse on Leon. But he didn't tell anyone about it. Because he didn't have any proof. Besides, even if I had proof, I would not tell anyone about it. After all, I will be the one who will take care of her, not anyone else. Evan thought and smiled coldly. He knew he was being petty for thinking like this, but he didn't care about it. R-I-N-G asterisk, R-I-N-G asterisk. Evan snapped out of his thoughts when his phone suddenly rang. He looked at the screen and saw it was an unknown number. Moshi Moshi. He accepted the call and spoke like a Japanese. Huh. Just as Evan spoke, he heard a confused voice of a male from the other end of the phone. Clearly the person who called him was stunned 
because he didn't understand what Evan was saying. C-O-U-G-H asterisk hello. Evan coughed lightly and spoke once again remembering people of Aurora world can't understand Japanese. Hello, I am the delivery man from the express delivery. Your parcel is here. Can you come out of the academy because I can't enter inside? When Evan heard what the man said he raised an eyebrow in surprise, wondering what this guy was talking about, because he doesn't remember ordering anything. But soon his eyes opened wide when he remembered who sent this parcel. I completely forget Illusia informed me that she sent the armor and the weapon she received from Olivia to me. Evan thought and quickly stood up. Just wait a minute I will be there Evan said, and left the training center in a hurry. But he quickly came back and summoned back Elijah before leaving again. In less than a minute he arrived outside of the academy, and saw the delivery man standing not far away from the gate of the academy. After seeing the delivery man Evan moved towards him, while bringing out his hunter card from his storage ring. Coming before the delivery man, Evan showed him his hunter card even before he could ask for it. Seeing the hunter card the delivery man nodded and gave him a small parcel. Please sign here. Placing the parcel inside his storage ring, Evan signed the document that the delivery man asked for and left from there. Instead of going back to the training center, Evan went back to his room. After coming back before checking the parcel, Evan decided to take a bath, since his body was still covered in sweat because of his earlier training. After taking a bath, he wore some clothes and sat down on his bed. While taking out the small parcel from his storage ring, without any hesitation, Evan ripped open the parcel and saw a storage ring inside. I did not ask Illusia what kind of weapon or armor Sarah sent to her, so I don't even know what is the rank of the items that she sent. Evan muttered while linking the storage ring to himself. After linking the ring with himself he looked inside it, and saw there were just two items in it. Chapter 321 R-I-N-G asterisk R-I-N-G asterisk. Olivia looked at her mobile phone and saw that the person she had asked to investigate about Leon was calling her. Without wasting any time she quickly picked up the call and asked, Did you find anything? We investigated about him properly, but unfortunately did not find anything. According to all the reports we gathered, that guy spent most of his time messing around in the brothel before his death. A man said in a hoarse voice and continued, We have also confirmed that he didn't meet anyone other than you in the last few days. After meeting you he went back to the academy. We are still looking for the person who killed him, but so far we are unable to find anything about the person who killed him. So there is nothing. Olivia asked feeling irritated that she don't know why the curse she put on Leon was triggered. Even though we are not sure, according to what we found in the last two days, we suspect that there were some people who were keeping an eye on Leon. Suddenly the man said after hearing Olivia's irritated voice. Olivia's eyes turned sharp when she heard the man and waited for him to continue. In some of the CCTV footage, we noticed some people were always following Leon sneakily. We looked into their details and found out they are members of a small mercenary group called Terror Brothers. We are suspecting that they were hired by someone to follow Leon. After hearing the man Olivia stayed silent for some time. You can do whatever you want. But I want to know who hired them as soon as possible Olivia said after a moment of silence. Alright, the man said and was about to end the call when he remembered something and stopped. By the way there is one more thing. Olivia who was ready to end the call raised an eyebrow when she heard the man and waited for him to continue. After Leon's death, a fight broke out outside the same brothel in which Leon was found dead, and one of the men involved in the fight was actually the leader of the Terror Brother group. Oh, Olivia's interest was piqued when she heard him. Tell me what happened. She asked him to tell her everything that he knew. Soon the man told Olivia everything including Evan's involvement in the matter. He also told her how he beat down Jack, who is the son of Adam, the guild master of arcane scribes. When she heard Evan beat down Jack including his two bodyguards, she was stunned. She still remembered how he wasn't even able to fight against one B rank monster during the practical exam. After telling Olivia everything the man ended the call. It is just two months and he can not only fight against B plus rank hunters, he can even defeat them without breaking a sweat. Olivia muttered while thinking about what Evan said to her at the end of the practical exam. But soon a cold smirk appeared on her face and she walked towards the window of the room looking outside. So what if he can fight against B-plus rank hunters? 
The difference between a B-plus ranker and an A-plus ranker is not something that he can cover so easily. Olivia said and gazed at the Astart city from the window. Besides, she stopped looking outside and took out a box from her storage ring. Even if he is somehow able to fight against an A-plus ranker in the remaining four months, he won't be able to do anything to me once I use this thing. When Evan looked into the storage ring, he saw two items inside it. One was a purple-black colored armor, while the second item was a silver colored pendant. There was no weapon inside the storage ring, and Evan wasn't surprised when he saw this. After he asked Valerie to make gauntlets for him, he also asked Illusia to exchange the weapon that Sarah will send her for a useful accessory type artifact. Using the connection of her gold rank guild, it was not difficult for Illusia to exchange a weapon for an accessory type artifact. I thought she was not able to exchange that weapon for anything, since she did not tell me anything about it. Evan muttered and first took out the purple black colored armor. Sunfire Armor A plus rank. Crafted from the radiant scales of a solar wyvern, the Sunfire Armor harnesses the power of sunlight. It provides its wearer with a great defense. The armor decreases all magical and physical type damage received by the wearer by 35%. When worn, the armor absorbs sunlight, storing its energy within the scales. This energy can be unleashed to create blinding light bursts, heal wounds, and provide enhanced strength and speed during the day. After reading the details of the armor, Evan's mouth was slightly open. He looked at the armor in his hands and wasn't able to speak anything for some time. After a good minute, he finally came out of his dazed state and said, This is way better than the Night Spike armor that I got after robbing Jack. The Night Spike armor he got from Jack is a B-plus rank armor, and it can block 20% of both physical and magic type damage that its wearer receives. But since it is only a B-plus rank armor, it is way inferior when compared to Sunfire armor. If an A-plus ranker unleashes his full power attack on the Night Spike armor, there is a very high chance it will not be able to handle that attack power, and will immediately shatter. Meanwhile, since Sunfire is an A-plus rank armor, it will be able to handle the attack power of an A-plus rank hunter without any problem. This armor will be of great help to me in what I plan to do after I increase the rank of my calls. Evan muttered and placed the armor aside. Let's see what is this silver colored pendant is. Chapter 322. Evan took out the silver colored pendant from the storage ring and looked at its details. Sprite pendant A plus rank. This pendant can protect its wearer from two spiritual type attacks per day. While wearing the necklace, the wearer can use the Sprite Sacrifice. Skill once a day. Sprite Sacrifice Dash. The wearer of the Sprite Pendant can sacrifice 70% of his total mana and 50% of stamina to temporarily increase his strength, agility and intelligence by 50% for one minute. When Evan read the description of the Pendant, he could not help but gasp in shock. Just to make sure that he didn't see it wrong, Evan read the details of the Sprite Pendant once again. After seeing the details of the Pendant were still the same, Evan took a deep breath and held the Spirit Pendant tightly in his hands. How did Illusia exchange that weapon for such a rare artifact? Muttered Evan, still feeling excited after reading the details of the Pendant. He was excited because artifacts that can save you from spiritual type attacks are very rare. For example, his Shielding Amulet Earring. That can protect him from any sudden physical or magical attack is a very good artifact. But you can get artifacts similar to it as long as you have enough resources and connections. On the other hand, artifacts similar to the Sprite Pendant are very rare, and you can't find them easily. The reason behind this is that most of the blacksmiths can't make artifacts that can protect you from spiritual type attacks. Very few blacksmiths can make items that can protect you from spiritual type attacks. Most of the items that can protect you from spiritual attacks came from dungeons, because not many people can make them. Even though my current spiritual power is quite strong, it never hurt to have some extra protection Evan muttered, and wore the sprite pendant. The sprite sacrifice skill is also very good, since it can save me in a critical moment said Evan, while reading the details of the skill. Even though the price of using the sprite sacrifice skill is very high, the power boost that it will give him is also not normal. While looking at the details of the Sprite Sacrifice skill, a sudden thought came into Evan's mind. I don't know about mana, but I don't think I will have any problem regarding stamina if I use that skill, along with Sprite Sacrifice said Evan while rubbing his chin. 
After wearing the pendant he looked at the purplish black armor. I like armors that are made of leather. This is my first time trying an armor that is not made of leather, said Evan while wearing the sunfire armor. Surprisingly after Evan wore the armor, he didn't feel any discomfort that the expected he will feel after wearing armor, made from the hard scales of a wyvern. Looks like the person who made this armor was a master blacksmith, since he was able to make such a good armor. The scales of Solar Wyvern are orange in color, but the armor Evan got was purplish black in color even though it was made from Solar Wyvern scales. The color of the armor was different because before sending armor to him, Illusia changed its color, so that people of the Dark Guild won't be able to recognize it easily. Evan moved around in his room trying to see if there was anything wrong with the armor, but after testing the armor for 5 minutes, he was completely satisfied with it. Since he was inside his room, there was no sunlight to test the effect of his sunfire armor. But Evan wasn't in a hurry to test its effect, because he knew he will get plenty of opportunities to test its special ability. He took off his sunfire armor, and after placing it in his shadow storage, he left the room. Leaving the room Evan went towards the training center once again. Coming one of the private rooms of the training center Evan once again wore his sunfire armor and summoned a leisure. Elijah attack on me using your full power. He said to Elijah after summoning her. Elijah nodded her head as a white aura covered her entire body. She taped her feet on the ground and instantly disappeared from the place she was standing. Evan already activated his temporal velocity skill since he knew Elijah's agility is too fast and he won't be able to see her movement clearly if he doesn't use it. Evan watched as after using Light Element to increase her physical capabilities, Elijah arrived before him, and punched him using her full strength. Even after seeing her fist coming towards himself, Evan did not move and let her fist connect with his armor. Boom dash. A loud booming sound echoed out as Elijah's fist came into contact with the Sunfire armor he was wearing. Shockwave spread in all surroundings, activating all the runes of the training center. Evan was sent flying backwards and crashed against the wall of the training center. Damn, even though I am not seriously injured after taking her attack head on, it's still heart like hell. Surprisingly Evan was completely fine even after taking Elijah's attack head on. He looked at the place where Elijah's punch was connected and saw there wasn't even a scratch on his armor. So this is the defense of an A plus rank armor, huh? Evan muttered after seeing the Sunfire armor was completely fine. He was sure that if it was Night Spike armor, it would have definitely received some serious damage. After taking a full blow attack from Elijah, well, you cannot compare a B plus and A plus rank armor said Evan and shook his head. Now that I confirmed the defense of the armor, let's see if I can use that skill to remove the negative effects of Sprite Sacrifice skill. Evan thought and walked into the middle of the training center once again. Chapter 323 STEP asterisk STEP asterisk STEP asterisk The sound of footsteps was heard as a man enters in the dimly lit hallway. The man was wearing a long black cloak which was covering his entire body. The walls in the hallway were adorned with some strange paintings, mostly showing destroyed cities littered with human corpses. Four people were following behind the man without saying anything or making a sound. Among the four people, one was female and the rest were male. These four people were Jamison, Mason, Ryan, and Audrey. The four A-rank hunters who attacked on the Naphlium city during the Monster Tide. The person walking in front of them was Kazel, the man who was with Hell 8 before the start of the Monster Tide. After one minute of walking, they reached the end of the hallway and arrived before a room. The door of the room was closed, and two B-rank hunters were standing guard outside of it. Seeing Kazel and others the two guards immediately opened the door and stepped aside. Kazel was an S-rank hunter even though he wasn't doing anything. Just standing near him made the body of two B-rank hunters tense. Just as the door opened, Kazel and others heard the sound of some people talking. Before entering the room, Kazel lifted his hand and removed the hood which was covering his face. When Kazel removed his hood the guards were able to see his face. Kazel looks to be in his mid-twenties. He had short red hair and green eyes which were filled with coldness. There was a strange crimson colored mark at the center of his forehead. The mark was looking like the face of a human with two horns on its head. When Kazel entered the room, he saw a long table with three people sitting on its three sides. Behind each one of them stood four people like their faithful servants. Among the three people who were sitting two were men, while one was a female. 
When Kazel entered the room, all three people who were sitting looked at him. Ignoring the gazes of three people, Kazel walked forward with the same expression on his face, and took the seat at the other end of the table. Mason and the other three followed after Kazel and stood behind him silently. So you failed. One of the men who was sitting, said after Kazel took his seat. Kazel looked at the man who just spoke. The man was looking around 40 years old, had messy yellow hair, blue eyes, a muscular body, and was wearing a loose Hawaiian shirt and short pants. Even though he was sitting, just by looking at him anyone could tell that he was more than 200 cm tall. Our goal was to plant a seed of fear in the heart of people. And I don't think after what happened in the Naflium city you can say I failed, Xavier. Kazel said in an indifferent voice looking at the man named Xavier who was also an S-rank hunter like him. Yeah, yeah, if you say so, Xavier said in a mocking tone and shrugged his shoulders. Kazel ignored Xavier and looked at the other two people sitting on chairs. If you allowed me to help you, we could have destroyed the entire city you know. The woman sitting on the chair spoke while leaning back. Just like Kazel, the woman was in her mid-twenties, had long silver hair, fair skin, and green eyes. She was looking at Kazel with slight dissatisfaction, because he didn't allow her to participate in the Monster Tide event. If you have a problem with this, you should complain to Nate, not to me, Sarah. Kazel said with the same expression on his face, he was the one who planned everything and told me not to bring any one of you with me. If not for him, I could have helped that hell ape when it was killed by Amanda. Hearing Kazel, Sarah just snorted and did not say anything else. Speaking of Nate, where is that guy? Asked Kazel and looked at the last person who was sitting with them, because he was the one who called them here, saying he wanted to discuss something important with them. When the man heard Kazel's question, he shook his head with a helpless expression on his face. I called him earlier, but he did not pick up my call, and just sent a message, saying he is busy with something, so he will call me later. The man who just spoke was looking around 50 years old. He had dark brown hair and light blue eyes. His name was Elijah, and similar to Kazel, he also had a crimson colored mark at the center of his forehead. Hearing Elijah, Kazel sighed and did not ask anything else. That secretive bastard always acts like this. I think we should do something about him, Xavier said in a slightly irritated tone after hearing Elijah. Why don't you challenge him for the position of the leader? After all, he always says that if you are dissatisfied with him, you can challenge him anytime you wanted, Sarah said to Xavier with a smile on her face. Hearing Sarah, the memories of what happened when they challenged Nate last time appeared in Xavier's head. Just remembering how Nate single-handedly beat down all four of them to claim the position of the leader, made him shudder. You must be joking asking me to challenge that freak. Last time we were not even able to scratch him, even though it was one versus four, Xavier said while glaring at Sarah. If you don't have the guts to challenge him, then just shut your mouth and don't say you want to do something about his behavior, Sarah said, while showing him a mocking smile. You. Black lines appeared on Xavier's forehead, and he was on the verge of exploding after seeing Sarah's mocking smile. Stop it guys, Elijah said while rubbing his temples. I called all of you here to discuss something about Inferno Dungeon, not to fight against each other. Hearing the words Inferno Dungeon the expressions of everyone including Kazel changed, and they looked at Elijah with a serious face. Chapter 324 Inferno Dungeon The expressions of everyone including Kazel changed when they heard Elijah. Is there something wrong with the dungeon? Sarah asked Elijah with a frown on her face. Kazel and Xavier also looked at him wanting to know the same thing. Seeing their expressions Elijah shook his head, don't worry, the dungeon is fine at least for now. Hearing him the expressions of Xavier and others eased up a lot, but they still looked at him with a frown on their faces. What do you mean by it is fine for now? Kazel asked not understanding what he wanted to say. Recently I saw some people roaming in the area where Inferno Dungeon is located. I am afraid that if we don't do something about them, they might discover Inferno Dungeon even though we are hiding it using concealment formation. Elijah said and looked at them with a serious face. On the other hand, after hearing Elijah, Sarah and others looked at him like they were looking at an idiot. Seeing how they were looking at him, Elijah's mouth can't help but twitch and he rubbed his temples. I know you are thinking we should just kill them and the problem will be solved, right? He asked while taking a deep breath. Hearing Elijah all of them nodded their heads. 
If it was this simple I wouldn't have called all of you here, Elijah said, and showed them a photo. In the photo, there were five men wearing strange black armor type outfits which were covering their entire body. Seeing the photo the eyes of Kazal and others narrowed. These clothes Kazal said while looking at Elijah. You are right, they are the special unit of the Hunter Association. Three among them are A-rank hunters, while the remaining two are A-plus rank hunters. Even though we have the power to kill them, it will definitely attract the attention of the Hunter Association if we kill them there Elijah said after showing the photo. And we can't attract their attention in that area, since the Inferno Dungeon is located there, right? Sarah said to Elijah who nodded his head. What the hell they are doing in that area of wildernesses? Xavier asked while banging his fist against the table. It is normal for the members of the special unit to look for more resources in the wilderness. They might be looking for something in that area. Sarah said while thinking deeply. You made the right choice Elijah suddenly. Kazal said attracting their attention. If you had tried to kill them without making sufficient preparations. The chances of their escaping alive would have been around 80%. Hearing Kazal all of them were shocked. Elijah was an S rank hunter and Kazal was saying those A and A plus rank hunters would have been able to escape alive from there if he tried to kill them. Even though they were shocked they did not doubt on Kazal because he had no reason to lie to them. Moreover, Kazal was also a member of the Hunter Association before he joined them so they were certain that he was telling the truth. So what should we do for now? If we don't do anything about them there is a chance they might discover Inferno Dungeon and tell Hunter Association about it. Xavier asked with a frown on his face. Everyone turned silent because on the one hand they didn't want to attract the attention of the Hunter Association. On the second hand they are worried that if they does not do anything, the Inferno Dungeon will be exposed. Let's wait for now, Sarah said after a while. The Inferno Dungeon is hidden by the Concealment Formation, so the chances of them finding out about it are not very high. And if by chance they find out about it, then we will have no other choice but to eliminate them even if we have to face Hunter Association head on. Hearing Sarah all of them nodded their head. Ask our Formation Masters to create a space ceiling formation around the Inferno Dungeon. Make sure you activate that formation immediately if you want to kill them without giving them any chance of escaping. Kazal said to Elijah who nodded his head. Since we are done here I will be going first. I still have to settle some matters. Xavier said and was about to stand up. Wait a minute. But before he could stand up Sarah said stopping him. There is one more thing I wanted to discuss. Hearing Sarah, Xavier sat down and looked at her. Kazal and Elijah also looked at her waiting for her to continue. Did all of you forget? The all academic tournament will take place in a few days. Since we decided to let the world know about our presence, don't you think it will be a waste if we don't do anything during this tournament? Sarah said while showing a dangerous smile. Hearing Sarah a cruel light pass through in all of their eyes. So it is already time for that circus where those high ranking bastards of society will gather to see a bunch of monkeys showing off their skills. Xavier said while leaning back on his chair. Do you have a plan in mind? Kazal asked Sarah since she is the one who brought up the matter. I do have something in mind. Sarah said while thinking about a certain someone who made her lose two A plus rank artifacts. Do you need any help? Asked Elijah after hearing her. No. I have already planned everything. I am just telling you because I don't want any one of you to interfere during the tournament. Sarah said looking at all of them. All the people that I want to capture will be present at the same place during the tournament. I will be an idiot if I don't take advantage of this situation. Sarah thought to herself. I am not going to do anything even if you ask me. Because I have to take care of some other things, Kazel said and stood up. Xavier and Elijah were also not interested in the tournament, so they also agreed not to interfere during the tournament. When Sarah saw they all agreed to not interfere in the tournament she smiled. Just a few more days and I will be able to get them. Chapter 325 Is something wrong? Asked Evan with a confused face. Everything is wrong, shouted a man inside his mind who looks to be in his late 60s. Hey kid, why don't you think about it for one more time? This is not a joking matter you know. You might lose your life inside. The man who just shouted inside his mind said while handing back a golden colored card to Evan. Thanks for your concern. But I have my own ways to ensure my safety Evan said to the man. Besides, I am sure I will be safer inside rather than staying outside. 
He thought and walked forward. Sigh, young people these days are really stupid. The man muttered and stopped looking at Evan who was walking towards a dungeon portal. Monster Paradise Dungeon, huh? Evan said inwardly after coming in front of the dungeon portal and stepped inside it without hesitation. Monster Paradise is a B-rank flawless dungeon and is controlled by Crimson Blade Guild, whose guild master is Jeffrey. Evan used his dungeon access card to enter this dungeon because now his prime core is fully recovered and he can advance it to C-rank. He decided to advance his prime core to C-rank inside a dungeon because of what happened during his monarch core advancement. When his monarch core advanced to C-rank, he stayed unconscious almost for a month. Evan doesn't know what will happen when his prime core will advance to C-rank, and he can't take the risk of advancing inside the academy, where many high-ranking hunters are present. He thought about booking a hotel and advancing there. But there are many people who are waiting for a perfect opportunity to beat their SH asterisk T out of him. What if he once again loses consciousness during advancing to C rank? Evan was sure that if he lose consciousness like last time, there is a very high chance people from the Dark Guild or the Father of Jack, who might be boiling with anger after he beat down his son, might come after him. So in order to avoid all the problems he decided to advance in a dungeon. He carefully searched all the B-rank dungeons present in the Astraight City and finally chose Monster Paradise. There were many reasons he chose Monster Paradise, but the main reason he chose this dungeon was because of one of its restrictions. In Monster Paradise, only one person can enter at a time. This means if Evan enters in this dungeon, no one will be able to enter in it until he comes out of the dungeon or dies inside. So even if he loses consciousness during advancing to C-rank, he will not have to worry about someone else entering the dungeon. As for the monsters of the dungeon, Evan wasn't concerned about them one bit, because he was thinking about killing the boss of this dungeon before he tries to break through to C-rank. After killing the boss he will advance to see rank inside the boss room. Because the boss's room is separated from the rest of the dungeon, no monster will be able to disturb him. While he advances to see rank, unlike ruins where you will be teleported out of it after killing the monster inside it, the dungeon is different. After killing the boss monster you will not be teleported out of it automatically, instead, a portal that leads you out of the dungeon will appear in the boss room that you can use to leave the dungeon. Can't wait to advance to see rank. Evan thought as he stepped inside the dungeon portal. Upon entering the portal of the monster paradise Evan felt his surroundings turning blurry. When his vision returned to normal, he found himself standing at the top of a hill. Shriek exclamation point, shriek exclamation point, shriek exclamation point. Just as his vision returned to normal, he started to hear loud bird shrieks one after another and looked up into the blue sky. When he looked up, he saw some blue-colored flying monsters with a wingspan of 15 meters hovering above him. Roar dash, roar dash. Soon along with birds shrieking, he started to hear different kinds of roars of monsters. He looked down from the hill he was standing and saw a beautiful grassy plain filled with different kinds of trees. Many crystal clear streams of water were flowing in the grassy plain. All of these water streams were coming down from the different hills which were situated in the grassy plain. Different kinds of monsters can be seen all over the grassy plain, streams and mountains. The view was so beautiful that Evan was mesmerized for a second after seeing it. So this is the reason why the name of this dungeon is Monster Paradise. Evan muttered after seeing the beautiful but at the same time dangerous view. Shriek dash. Suddenly Evan once again heard the shriek of the blue bird and felt someone coming towards him from above. He looked up and saw one of the B rank flying birds coming towards him. Seeing the bird, Evan narrowed his eyes, he pressed his feet on the ground. The green wind started to cover his entire body. Two black wings appeared behind his back and... Boom dash. The ground beneath his feet cracked open as he propelled himself upwards and turned into a streak of blackish green light shooting towards the blue bird who was coming towards him. The blue bird wasn't even able to react before the blackish green light reached in front of it and a sharp sword light separated its head from the rest of its body. Blood spurted out in the air as the giant body of the bird started to drop down from the sky. Evan ignored the body of the bird and looked in the east direction where the boss room of the dungeon is located. Even though the difficulty of this dungeon is quite low when compared to VWD, a normal hunter still takes two or three days before he can reach the boss room of this dungeon, Evan muttered and cracked his neck. 
But since I am not normal, and also have the support of some crazy undeads, I will try to reach at the boss room in less than 10 hours. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The Silent Ruptors out.